Uh, hi, everyone. Normally, we don't start the show like this. There's a song. There's a song that people don't like that I've been thinking about getting rid of. And it didn't kind of seem appropriate to start the show uh, uh, the regular way because we wanted to talk about the death of a uh, listener of this show and do go on and a member of the Great Mates group called Joshua Merch, who recently passed away from, from COVID. And we just wanted to kind of read a bit of information and talk to you guys about that and what kind of person he was and, and what he's left behind and also a donation link, which we'll talk about um, more towards the end of this if people are interested in, uh, in donating so I've been speaking to somebody uh, like his mate Chris uh, through the group as well, who's um, been passing on this information from his family and friends, which I really appreciate because I know that's a really difficult thing to do to act as an in-between for that. But he's handled it really well and I really appreciate him doing that because it's got us, um, it's given us a better idea of who Joshua was as a person. Mm-hmm. And so we just want to share a bit of that uh, up top at the start of the show, if, if, if that's okay. So from Josh's family, they say, uh, thank you to everyone for all the messages, uh, all the messages, sorry, uh, kind words and love you've been sharing. It means so much. Josh's family would like, uh, would like to raise money towards a garden at the Royal Cornwall Hospital, uh, trust critical care unit in his memory rather than flowers or cards. Uh, there's a link below if people would like to, to donate to that, that would be much appreciated. But of course, as Mason and I uh, were talking about before the show, there's a, there's a lot going on in the world. People, are, people are doing it tough all over it's, the place. It's, things are... Not great the world over. So as my gran would say, things are crook in Tellarook. <laughs> I don't know where that is, but uh, no, I think maybe she was making it up. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, that was fictional, so it doesn't even exist. That that is crook. Yeah. Uh, so he actually he leaves behind his uh, his wife Hope, who were recently married, and his daughter Penny. Uh, his his best man at his wedding, Darren, left this message as well on on the page, which I uh, might get Mason to read out because I tried to read it earlier and I. Couldn't quite get through it, so if you could um I'll give that, it a crack, be, absolutely. Um, so it says here, him and his partner Hope got married on Saturday after the consultants gave the news that he probably wasn't going to make it. Uh, it was all spur of the moment. Josh called me in the morning to ask if I would be his best man and say a few words. They were married at just past midnight on Sunday the 24th of May. Uh, everything about the uh, group video call ceremony was incredible. The NHS staff were unbelievably accommodating and helpful, while Josh and Hope were wed there and then in the quarantine hospital room. Uh, it says his bride was wearing full PPE and still looked phenomenal. Uh, her sister is, uh, uh, his sister rather, is going to shave her hair to help raise money for the fundraising. Yeah, that's right. So, um, thank you to for the, the people who have sent over th- those messages. And we're just, it's, I mean, I don't know what to say in these situations. It's that's just, it's just horrible. It's a horrible situation. But he just seemed like a lovely guy. And it, I mean, yeah, I guess all you can do is say that at least you got to spend time with him. I mean, what a what a person to know and be and be married to. And and be be the daughter of and brother sister father all of those things. Um, I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. But yeah, the link is below if if people do want to check it out. Uh, so look, again, you don't have to donate. People are doing it tough everywhere in the world. We know obviously the situation in the US, but there's a, there's a, it's just things are what do you I don't know crook things <laughs> crook, are crook. things are crooked that place that you mentioned Tell her Tell her, yes. thank you. So yeah, that's just you know be careful um, and just look after yourself and and people around you and be kind. I think that would be. That's, that's the, the number one takeaway from yeah. this, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, on with this other dumb thing that we do. The dumbest thing. <laughs> the dumbest thing. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. What a week. What a, yeah. Big what a week. week. Big week. But we're just going to do the movie news, aren't we? That's correct. We're not going to think about anything else that is happening outside these four walls. No. Oh, three walls? James, one of the walls has fallen <laughs> oh, down. That was me. It's the it's the encroaching hordes that are coming at us right now. I, I just wanted to extend the studio, actually. That was a personal project that I shouldn't have started now. No, so, yeah. wrong, wrong time for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you probably heard the message up top, I'd imagine. I, people don't listen to this show um, for us to discuss world events, so we're just going to do the – Show. I thought you were just um, going to end there. People uh, don't listen to this show, and yeah. I've been like, "What? <laughs> what are we even doing? Uh, is this some sort of project to you for, to cheer me up, James? That's right. exactly. Is it now work? it's come to an end. Is it working? Yes. Oh, good. I, I'm, that's I'm fantastic. so cheery yeah. right now. Mm. Yeah, just big week. Big week. People, yeah. people who know will know. Yeah, which is everyone in yeah. the world. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, we're going to do a topic this week as well. And I say that because we've already recorded it. So, that's, right. that's great. So, that's, uh, that's already happening because this week we're going to talk about uh, Chris Nolan's real 747 that he crashed. That's right. Uh, some Tom Cruise space news, Indiana Jones 5, Superman and Justice League and Suicide Squad news and then extended cuts thing. That that's thing right. that we already recorded. Then I've got some letters. Then we've got some letters. And then I'm going to try and remember a thing yep. that I watched this week. That's right. Mm-hmm. In other words, just uh, the same rambling affair that we do. Every week. That's right. Excuse me. Some would say it's stale. I'd say it's comforting. Yeah. Like, a like s- an old bit of bread. I gonna, yeah, I was going to say an old stale donut, but bread is oh, it's well, a, it's a better That's all metaphor. good. You know, just something you can, you know. Something you, know, you can really have a bit of bust a, a tooth on. Have, have a bit of a nibble on it and then use it as a pillow, you know. It's comforting exactly. and it's dry. But be grateful that you've got some bread. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so a number of people sent this through uh, this week after we mentioned. I was like, what was that, like a big miniature that they crashed? Because that looked like a real 747 that Mm. Christopher Nolan crashed. That's right. And I I sound ridiculous saying big miniature Uh because that sounds dumb. Sure. But that is a thing that exists. (laughs) Yes. Uh, They use them in Lord of the Rings specifically. They're called... 747s. Yes, that's right. Well, I think there are planes in the background of some of those shots, but they're called bigatures. So they're like, but that's not what he did. So... So Christopher Nolan, I've got a quote here. He said, I plan to do this using miniatures and uh, set piece builds and a combination of visual effects and the rest. He told Total Film, we started to run the numbers. It became apparent that it would actually be more efficient to buy a real plane of the real size and perform the sequence for real in camera rather than build miniatures and go the CG route. So we cashed in all our stunt vouchers, (laughs) as I mentioned last week, and they said, all right, fine. Mm. Well, that's, re- that's really interesting yeah. as well. That the it's rest like- of the movie's just shot in a cubicle because <laughs> you blew the budget, you bought a yeah. plane. What, what world are we living in where crashing a real plane is cheaper than building a fake I guess plane? That's true. I, I, uh, something that I remembered this week, based you know, similarly, as, as I understand it, they also purchased a plane for Lost. Yeah, right, okay. Because, oh, that's right, they did and they shredded it. And, yeah, they, they, yep. they bought, I guess if you get one that it's the, at the end of its life, yeah, where may, I guess you know where they they look at it and go, okay, well, if we were going to service this to make it, you know, safe to fly, it would cost this amount of money, so it's really not worth doing it again. So yeah. we'll just sell it for scrap, and we'll get about the same amount of, amount of money for less work, exactly, kind of thing. And I guess if it doesn't have to fly, if it yeah. just has to, like, do we? Exactly. I, guess, I guess the question would be like because you know obviously it looks like the jet engines are working on the plane. Yes, I wonder if that was this like maybe oh, there's yeah. maybe there's no engines on it. Yeah, like they sold it. Or, you know, non-functional engines, just the shell or something. Because I guess they... you wouldn't fuel it up and roll it in for real. I mean, I say that. <laughs> but we but said that last week, didn't last we, right? so... Maybe if we keep baiting Christopher Nolan, yeah. he'll keep revealing tidbits exactly. until he's revealed the entire plot of the movie and we won't have to see it. And then mm. the cinema industry will collapse. That's right. As we've always wanted. And then we can stop the show finally. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, maybe... I dare. I don't think Christopher Nolan would ever film this, a movie the same time as Tom Cruise's shooting his movie in space and accidentally knocks him out of orbit into the sun. I bet he wouldn't even, no, he would right. never do that, would no, he? he's too much of a gentleman. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, maybe they just, it's just a shell of a plane, you know, like the lost plane, they broke yeah. apart for parts. And then it's just, they've gotten some strong men with ropes to pull it yeah. into the building. You've seen them do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Apparently it's not that hard once you get the plane moving. Oh, once you get past the notion. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, that's right. <laughs> once, yeah, once you get the get past the actual the, the, the hardest bit, get getting the plane moving. moving then, once it's moving. Then you can't stop it. <laughs> yeah, and then right. you're in trouble. That's right. So anyway, I'm sure we'll find out during the week that it had all the engines and fuel in it and maybe some of the crew. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. What a world. Uh, Doug Lyman is directing uh, Tom Cruise. That Tom Cruise is that I mentioned the Tom Cruise thing mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. he's shooting a movie in space. Didn't a, a SpaceX rocket blow up this week? Yeah, oh, they Tom launched. Cruise, Tom launched, Cruise wasn't on. I that. think they launched one. Didn't, okay. Did it blow up? Something blew up. There's so much news. So I'm just kind yeah, of, uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the loop. And don't, right. I don't need messages about it. What's going to happen is we're going to have a number of revelations through this episode, probably where we're like, is that real? Is that, <laughs> yeah. Oh, an arrow guy. Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, Doug Lyman, he directed the first Bourne movie, Jumper, uh-huh. which I think is an underrated, solid action movie. I watched that a few months back. Uh-huh. It's good. It's wait, not- wait, 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 wait. You watched something a couple of months back for your own enjoyment. <laughs> I know. Because you right? didn't mention it on the podcast. <laughs> I think I did actually. Did you? Okay, Maybe right. I did, but the movie Jumper. We certainly didn't produce any content out of it, James. <laughs> no, no, no. How dare you? <laughs> But Jump is solid, I feel. Right, okay. I think I, look, I haven't gone back to it since. We saw it at the cinema, obviously. Yeah, I'd uh-huh. seen it since. But I, the, I think the, the, the fight scenes are creative. 
uh-huh. and the premise and and it's it's interesting and yeah I like it. Oh, the only thing, yeah, okay. If I now now it's coming back to me. The only reason that I guess I've never given that movie another shot mm. is that for the whole movie, it's Samuel L. Jackson is the bad yeah. guy, and he's like, I have this. I'm a part of a religion. We're gonna destroy you, jumpers. This uh, my whole life is built around you being horrible inhuman monsters and I'm going to get you. And at the end he's marooned somewhere and he's just got a face of like, oh, you got me. <laughs> you got me, but I'll get you yeah. next time. You, In a way I brought you, this up myself. You cheeky jumper. <laughs> oh, right. I retract all my earlier statements about this holy war that I'm in. Yeah, but he died there. Oh, that's that's. Sad. I mean, he would have, right? Yeah, yeah. How is he going to get out of that? Well, he can't jump, can he? I mean, he can physically jump, but he'd probably die that yeah. way as well. <laughs> that's right, exactly. So, I right. also did Edge of Tomorrow, and I don't know if you saw American Made. Do you see that one? The recent Tom Cruise one where he's, well, he's a, a gun he's, runner or something? Yeah, uh, a drug smuggler for the CIA. And I didn't and see that. that no. It's good. You should okay, totally right. watch it. But uh, so yeah, so he's going to be the one working on this. Tom Cruise is going to definitely die in space this time. The movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, do we know? Have, have I glossed over all the plot details of this potential? I think all we know is that he's filming it in space. Okay, great. But I will, don't worry, I will keep you updated. Potentially. As long as there is three walls and a floor. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. The roof's gone now. Oh, no. <laughs> of the studio. Oh. I will keep you updated. Potentially, this is just another ad to. Uh, Implore people not to implore people to switch off motion smoothing on their TV. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like he's risked death and decompression and exploding and freezing in space. So he'd be like, listen, go to your parents' television, go into <laughs> menu, yeah. go into settings, go into video. If they ask you what you're doing, mm-hmm. tell them to get the fuck out. Don't even, that's right. you don't have to engage with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you turn the motion smoothing off your TV? I don't think mine's on, but I didn't check. I went, yeah, because. I'm a little bit concerned that mine constantly switches itself back on. I feel oh, right, I've had to yeah. go. I feel I've had to go back in a yeah. couple of times and switch it off. And what I think is maybe happening is when the firmware on the TV updates oh, switches okay, everything switches back on back, again. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, my also, God. I can't tell. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I can, but I, maybe I can't because yeah. maybe it's on. Uh, yeah, it's strange. Strange times in terms of TVs. Mm. Um, I was going to say something else. So that's why I said that. that I, was, I was padding for time till oh, I yes. thought of it, but I didn't think of it. So, so it's guess, still gone? I guess okay. we're just going to move on. <laughs> okay. To it's the, about uh, Tom Cruise. We can go back. We can find this. No, nah, no, nah, it's fine. Tom if Cruise. I think of it, I'll come. In space. Yeah. Elon yeah. Musk. You know what will happen? I'll listen back to this and then I'll be like, just no, I, no I won't though, okay. but I won't. Yeah, there you go. Uh, James Mangold has confirmed, as we already knew, that he is indeed directing Indiana Jones 5. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry, Frank Marshall said that, who's the producer on the, on this film. Uh, apparently, though, they're going to be making adjustments for the current state of the world, so we won't be seeing big crowd scenes, no oh. craft services. So they're working on solutions so they can film this in the, uh, the safest way possible. So I guess you're not going to have Harrison Ford like walk under any door frames or anything like that. Yeah, right. Make sure he doesn't touch any vehicles. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, you know, things like that. Just keeping yeah. it as safe as possible. Yeah. Keep him on the ground, Mason. That's right. Do you think Indiana Jones, in, this is great, by the way. I think it's exactly what it needs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you also, think this it, week, this week, James Mangold tweeted uh, somebody uh, a clickbait uh, website. I think tweeted something like, "Here's uh, here's the intro to the to Logan. You you never saw. You this is a, it's a completely unused version, and you've never. It's fresh, and it's just a completely fresh alternate take. Yeah. And then he quote tweeted that, and he's like, "It's the same, yeah. the same as what we released. <laughs> yeah, because same isn't thing. Because he did release like the fight choreography, right? Like yeah, this yeah. is how we this is how we mapped it out. Yeah, right. And that uh-huh. was like that wasn't supposed to be the the start of the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> like right. that, obviously. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what was I going to say? Um, Mangold. Again, I've forgotten. I've, I'm, I've, I don't know what I was gonna, supposed to come back to. <laughs> Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Things are good. Uh, th- yeah. In, uh, Indiana Jones crowd. Oh, yeah. So do you think yes. the character of Indiana Jones would have learnt to fly in these years, in these 60-odd years bet- the between movies that we've had? Like, personally? Yeah, no, the character of. Because, you know, in... in uh, you mean using a vehicle of some sort? I mean, he, yes. Not flying, just no, no, no. Yes, exactly. <laughs> not a flying. Not under situation. his own, uh, his own okay. steam. <laughs> not in some sort of whip crack helicopter scenario. <laughs> no. Okay, I mean, right. Don't get me wrong. I love that. Yeah. But somewhere between uh, Last Crusade, because uh-huh. maybe he did learn. Yeah, yeah. During um, Crystal Skull, we don't know because yeah, he didn't fly a plane sure. in that. But do you think he would have learned, or do you think he's just like eh, it's fine? I reckon if you are gonna, he's if, bold enough. If you're trying would've. to lure Harrison Ford back to a movie franchise, mm. even one that maybe he does want to, you know, he's still interested in a yeah. little bit. I think if you're gonna, you you could sweeten the pot by being like, 
Guess what Indy gets to do? Yes. It's to fly a little plane. Yeah. What do you do, Harrison? You fly little planes, don't you? <laughs> you come, on, plane. come in here, buddy. Come in here. Come in the room. We've locked you in. Now sign the contract. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Harrison Ford would do a movie now where he goes to get in a plane and he's like, but I don't know how to pl- uh, fly a plane and I'm a bad pilot. Oh, you think pride would get in the way, <laughs> Do you think he'd do it? Yeah, I don't no, think he would. I think he would nah, he's, he's pre- an actor. Yeah, he's an actor. It's he's right. Pre- he'd pretend, wouldn't he? He'd just pretend. That's very good, yeah. Harrison Ford. But that would be a fun twist, I think. Yeah. If, you know, they're in a they're in a some sort of crash dive situation as they often are in an Indiana Jones movie, and he's just like, I've been I learned a, I spent ten years learning how to fly. Yeah, because that I'm, time I couldn't. I'm kind of immortal, I think maybe. Yeah, now. I don't absolutely. Know. Though I should people will correct me. He says he can fly a plane, but he can't land a plane. Oh yeah, right. Remember uh-huh. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly yes, land no. That's right. Yeah. yeah there you go. Just in case, because yeah. you know. You know. Now land, yes, fly, no. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I took some kind of weird lessons, an opium den in whatever era this is. In and now, era it is, yeah. If I'm in a plane and it's going to crash, which it probably is because I can't fly it now, yeah. I can land it. So Absolutely. everything's worked out. All right, I'm going to say a series of words mm-hmm. and you tell me when this starts to sound bad. Okay. Uh, variety. The publication. Good. Mm. And also a general variety of things. Sure, because absolutely. Because as we know, spice of life. That's right. Modern day. Okay, I uh, enjoy well, it. Well, I mean, <laughs> generally speaking. Generally speaking, it's yeah. good. But I mean, yeah. could 2020 end already? Whoa, he took his glasses off. Oh, yep. There we go. That's better. <laughs> uh, but modern day, generally, I like my modern day conveniences. Sure. My electric can opener. Yeah, you, before the show. I don't have that. <laughs> Everything's got a pull ring now. You, know, right? you don't even need one. Yep. Until you do, though. <laughs> Until you really do. My Kodachrome camera. That's right. Uh, you, you mentioned before the show you said smartphones, and I said, don't you mean dumb phones? I did, yeah. It was you a good did. joke yeah, that we, we had. Yeah, before the, we before shared the... that joke. Yeah, that's right. Modern day references are Modern good, references as, are as good. we've just proven, I think. Uh, the movie Nightcrawler, you know, the Jake Gyllenhaal one. Oh, yeah. These all things are going to come together. Uh-huh. Uh, the director of Bad Education, Corey Finley. Okay, sure. He's the front runner for this project. Ryan Gosling is the lead. Oh. And this is for a uh, Universal Pictures. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, okay, yeah I know. Okay, I was going to say, I'll cut you off there because I already know what's coming up. Yeah. He's the Wolfman now. I uh, Honestly, though, I think that all sounds great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good. So if for people who uh, didn't put that together, because why would I do a news story like that? <laughs> Just mixing it up. Keep yeah, it fresh. That was fun. I liked, the, I liked the game we played. Thank you. Variety yeah. reported that Universal Pictures have got Ryan Gosling on board to star in the Wolfman by- uh, I would have fr- stopped you at Universal Pictures. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> the Bad Education. I would, I would have stopped you at Universal and I would be like, choose your next words very carefully. <laughs> you better say, run better, into the ground. You better not say dark or universe here. <laughs> so uh, from the director of potentially a bad education, have you seen that yet with no. Hugh Jackman? It's terrific. You should definitely watch it. Which one is it again? Uh, it's the one where he's like, an, he's a superintendent at a, a high school and it's about like funding and school funding, but what if funding. too much funding or not enough? Okay. Depending on the- Is it's there great. a scandal? Well, the scandal, Mason. Okay. Without getting into it, I like the season of the Wire that's set in the in the schools. I've never seen the Wire. I know. Yeah, but I will. But actually, I can't watch it because if it's not for this show, I'm not allowed to watch it. That's am right. I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, so, like a Nightcrawler esque modern day take on that. So great, terrific, whatever that looks like. So this is unconnected, I guess, from because Bloomhouse are doing the Invisible Man, which is also Dark Universe. But none of these are seemingly connected, maybe anymore. Which is or now, now until they're all until they like, do. If this together. one is successful, I guarantee you that. And you know what? I I bet this. They're currently they're like, how can we tie these together? Yeah, like absolutely. They're preemptively like, if this one hits big at the box office, yeah. How do we put them? How do we? How do we? Who's next? Yes, exactly. Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Bride of Frankenstein. Well, I think they are doing that. At the, or they were. I don't know. Mm. They're doing a Monster Mash movie or something, or oh, Monster yeah. Squad. That's I don't right. know. I don't know anything about this stuff. But that's. A, I'm just. It. It's very interesting to me that Ryan Gosling would do that. Yeah. Because he could do anything. He could do Drive Two. And that's I would, true. Yeah. I mean, drive Control. Drive Control. <laughs> It's this thing, the turny bit. The turning thing, the round part. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. The, You're not talking about the wheels, are you? No, the steering wheel, steering though. Wheel. A wheel of a very different kind. <laughs> that's right. In a way, they're connected, though, aren't they? They are, it's true, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there Through we go. the circle of life. Yes. Oh, by that, I mean the steering wheel. Steering that's wheel. That's what I call it. Do you remember not having power steering in it? Have you ever had a car yes, without power yes, steering? Yes, I have, yeah. It's like turning a bus. Oh, my God, it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Remember yeah. how you try and take... Because, by the way, when we started driving cars, they... There should, there should have been more power steering than there was. I think we just had old, terrible cars. Yeah, I had an old, terrible car. Yeah. 
But like you try to like turn around in a court, and it was like a three point oh turn. It's like a whole day. People would come out of their houses and look at you as you were doing it. You're like, no, I'm not a bad driver. It's just the car. And they're like, we hate everything about this. Yeah, and sometimes it's, they'd cheer you on like it was a marathon, and they'd hold you. What, they'd hand you cups of water as you're yeah, doing yeah, it. That's yeah, right, yeah. It's a whole situation. Here's an underrated feature of a car. Sure. You open the door. Mm-hmm. You just leave it somewhere. The door just stays wherever you left it. Yeah, right. You just put it there because sometimes you you open the door. And yeah, you're like I'll just and then it just swings closed on you. Yeah, it swings open on you. That's you know true. I mean? Yeah, that's not that's really because because often also if you're getting out on a busy road. Yeah, you kind of want to be be over that. My boot has a thing. My car boot. Yes, as it's a it's a newer car. And it's got the one where you got to press the button. And it closes by itself. I fucking hate it. Like it's because it takes forever. <laughs> you can't like, slam it. I can't slam it, and I can't like yank it open because I'm always in a hurry. I'm right. constantly late. I'm never not. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, I mean, you know, it'd be funny if this was like, you know, one of those TV shows where they had to like subtly insert like, uh, <laughs> like a like a car ad in the in the middle where it's like, Bones, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just enjoying my automated reverse parking in my new VW Sport or whatever. What if, what if it was that, but we've just been paid by car manufacturers to promote like doors that stay <laughs> when you open Boots them? Boots that you can open Boot, by yeah. yourself? Yep, that's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, first world problems that my modern car boot opens and closes by itself. Yeah, my God. Yeah. Lucky for some. I know, right? Uh, Scott Derrickson, uh, who people might know from last, the last thing he did was Doctor Strange, and he was working on the new Doctor Strange movie. Yes. Now he's doing a Labyrinth sequel, a movie that I saw too late and don't like. A uh, movie that I've never seen. <laughs> okay, And yeah. so it is definitively too late. <laughs> yes. I saw it when I was early 20s maybe. So I was like, I get this. Mm-hmm. Like this is a kid. Right. This is all my wheelhouse and I love it. Yeah, right. But as an adult, I'm like. But James David Bowie's in it. Yeah, he's good in it. It's all good. You're right, yeah. The little Muppets, Jennifer Connolly, a baby gets stolen. The dream. Oh, my God, yeah. So, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm about. So, Labyrinth sequel, what do you think? Ah. Uh, uh, I mean, they recently did brought back the Dark Crystal for Netflix. That's true, they all did. All puppetry. So I think it will look amazing and it'll probably be a faithful adaptation and this seems like the perfect guy to do it. Uh, it's a shame you can't obviously get Bowie, but um, who do you get? Uh, whichever guy in the Flight of the Concords did that impression. Oh, of. yeah. Well, that guy we Jermaine. met that time that looked a lot like David Bowie. You know that guy? You know the guy I'm talking about? <laughs> I don't know that guy. What he guy? He's like that theatre guy. Did, I, did we know him? Do we talk to he him? He was a friend of a friend. Did we talk to him? No, but he looked like David Bowie. Yeah, get him. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Collings, uh, who's editing this. Could you just figure that out? Who that guy is? <laughs> yep, just. He's just, very good at his job. Just figure it out through our social medias, various. <laughs> The guy we've never met. Yeah, you'll 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 twig later, and you'll be okay. like, "Oh my god, that guy who looked incredibly like David okay, Bowie. Yeah. He was we like a young should... guy, sounded like a white head, <laughs> like Bowie. Yeah, like Bowie does, and a skinny body like Bowie. Yes, exactly. skinny body Bowie. Yeah, skinny Bowie body. Yeah, thin, yeah. thin white Duke Bowie. Great. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so this is the new segment of the show called Every Week Forever. Nev, this is never going to stop. Fuck me. So, it's not a cut. Yes. News? Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Even when this is finished and the cut is out. Mm-hmm. This will go on forever. Oh my goodness. Remember how we thought Batman v Superman news was over when that movie came out? Yep. Still happening, isn't it? Like, well, that's this is what we need. Yeah, you're because right. that, you know, because obviously Keeps us young in a as, way. As I think I mentioned uh, somewhere earlier this week, we started this podcast based on the anticipation yes. of Batman v Superman. You know where you mentioned it because we recorded the Caravan of Garbage for Batman v Superman. That's right. They're starting on Tuesday with Man of Steel. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, go on. Uh, uh, so maybe this is the shot in the arm this podcast needs. Kaboom. Yep. Oh, not like a gunshot. No. No, who wants a gunshot to the arm? I, I don't know. I don't, yeah. That's why I was wondering why you would say that. What you want is roids. Yeah, just in the one arm. Yeah, that's right. Mm, very good. One big old arm. Anyway, so. But anyway, uh, there's going to be Snyder Cut news now until forever. The, the well, end th- of time. this is. Uh, I've got other things to go into, but this is all DC stuff. So, David Ayer, this, he's mentioned this on his cut of this uh, Suicide Squad movie. Uh huh. Uh, this is a good question. My cut would be easy to complete. It would be incredibly cathartic for me. It's exhausting getting your ass kicked uh, for a film that got the Edward Scissorhands treatment. The film I made has never been seen. Of course, his version was famously cut and changed into a different thing. By a uh, a trailer editing yeah, company. The perfect <laughs> <laughs> crime. That's right. Yes. Um, again, I don't hate that movie. I think it's... It's fine. It swells right down the middle for me. Yeah, I boy, think. is yeah. it. Um, uh, and I think, didn't he, there were, because there were a number of, I think this week he also, people pointed out a number of the different trailers for Suicide Squad, yes. which again got increasingly wacky yes. as the as the and release the, date came closer. And the, um, the font changed. Yeah, and he said one of them was quite accurate, but I could not tell you which one it was. Ooh, the first one, yeah? Probably the first one. Mm. He also said, uh, 
Uh, of course, my cut isn't the uh, antithesis of filmmaking. Apotheosis? Yeah. Okay. I've written that wrong here. <laughs> okay. Apologies. Uh, it's simply better than what the public has seen. And yes, it would make sense to update it. And there's rumors, of course, that that might be happening. He said the only battle, of course, that he won in the making of that movie was Diablo killing his family. Right. Which I thought the Diablo character in that was, to me, the most interesting element of that movie. I thought he was really compelling and interesting and yeah, had stakes. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he died in that? I mean, sure, but only in the way that comic book characters die in which, you know, they're pretty much reduced to ash and that doesn't mean anything because they can obviously come back from that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, he said the only right. – uh, also, he planned to link it directly into Justice League Part 1 and Part 2. So him and Zack Snyder collaborated on that so they'd all feed into each other, which also makes sense because – Ben Affleck is in that movie and then shows up at the end and is like, I'm putting together a team or something. That happens in that movie, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. He says, I'm putting together a team. Right at the end, team. yeah, he says, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, speaking of somebody putting together a team. Is a oh, I was going to say, uh, just, oh, sorry, just before you go into that, uh, David Ayer's most recent tweet, mm. uh, somebody has tweeted at him, uh, Justice League had an entire... Or maybe it's just a general tweet. It says, Justice League had an entire change in director and plot details. Suicide Squad's editor might have changed, but Trailer Park was still working with footage filmed under Ayer's control. And he's just written, wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, great. So, yeah, I think uh, and uh, I, I was sort of under the impression, even mate, as recently as a couple of weeks ago, that David Ayer was like, it is what it is kind well, of Well, he did but, say that initially. Yeah. And I guess because... He didn't want to be. I mean, because he never mentioned it at the time. Yeah, like it was. It was kind of well known that that wasn't his movie, but he never kind of came out and was like. And they took my film and they butchered it. But I think they must be working towards something if he's starting now to open up about it a bit more. He kind of it gets people talking about it. It's good for marketing. Yeah. Apparently, HBO launch uh, HBO Max Go, whichever one it's called, uh-huh. which, and it's terrible. Like, there's a bunch of stuff missing, and the app is broken. I've heard bad yeah. things. Like it's, that it's was been like a bad a, launch. That's yeah. a slam dunk idea, which I think I might have even said last week. Uh-huh. And I mean, it doesn't really matter because they'll release things along the way, which people will jump on board for. But there's also nothing new in it at the moment. Like, yeah. there's nothing in it that you'd go, "Oh, I haven't seen that because it's exclusive to this app." Yeah, right. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, yeah. So what you need is a quibby. You need a quibbly. Yeah. That was qu- 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 a quibbly, quibbly, yes, quib- that's right. <laughs> quib- quibney. Uh, well, quib- quibby obviously was originally built just to, you know, just for short quibbles. Yes. So if you wanted, to, it was, it was to, it was to, you know, videot- between tiny little men. <laughs> exactly. You, you, you could, you could videotape your arguments yeah. between y- yourself and another tiny little man and submit it to Quibbly, <laughs> and they would, they would put it up there for you. Okay, so this is, this is Dave. This that, is- that, no seriousness, that's a good idea for an app. Let's do it. <laughs> Tiny men fighting. Yeah, right. Oh, in the app. <laughs> yeah, or? yeah. You submit. But yeah. I'm, I'm not talking violent. I'm and talking like a little, like a like a little maybe buster. People vote. Maybe it could be like you know Reddit's like am I the asshole? <laughs> yeah, thing. You, I love you, that. You yeah. submit a video. Yep. You have a little quibbly. Yeah, and then people upvote and downvote it, and they have opinions and they comment. In a way, it's like YouTube, but with less uh, functionality. <laughs> and, and it's fun. and it's vertical. <laughs> and it's vertical. <laughs> and it's always constantly giving you alerts, and you can't switch them off. <laughs> Okay, so this okay, see, this is this is the tweet that I was talking about. Okay, so somebody has uh, uh, said to him, uh, "The I started a joke trailer is the greatest isolated piece of Suicide Squad content." And David Ayer has said, "Is twenty one hours ago, this trailer nailed the tone and intention of the film I made. Methodical, layered, complex, beautiful, and sad." After the BVS reviews shell shocked the leadership at the time and the success of Deadpool, my soulful drama was beaten into a quotes comedy. Yeah, yeah, so. But he didn't. There were no reshoots on that, right? Did they just tweak what they had? Uh well, it says there, there's another there's another tweet directly under that, and it's talking about a scene with the Joker in it. Yeah, and right. it says this was reshot because the tone was too dark. Oh, I guess they did then. So, but I don't know if 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 the, it was reshot by somebody else or if they made him reshoot it. Yeah, right. For example, okay. it doesn't it doesn't specify. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, interesting. So, look, I would say if he's starting to talk about it, that's probably. Yeah. And he in the says works. here, yeah, there were real scenes with incredible acting between Jared and Margot. Joker was terrifying. Harley was complex, which I think we already knew. Yes, like it, it very much seemed in that theatrical release that there was a whole long Harley Joker. Subplot. It was like or even 45 a main plot. minutes or whatever. Yeah, that, yeah. that was going to, and, and based on, especially on what Jared Leto said about it and, and his reaction once the, the movie came out. He got that, real pissy. Yeah, he got real pissy. That mm. There was apparently, you know, maybe yeah. hours of footage or, you know, a whole a whole movie's worth of plot around those two characters that they just went, man, it's not funny, so <laughs> out it goes. Yeah, well, God forbid, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. 
Anyway, so, I say re-edit movies forever. Yeah. I'm, it sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm kind of on board with this now. Look, I think... <laughs> because you know why? It's not my money. It's, I don't care. It does get, yeah. I think it's also, it's going to get to a point where they're going to be like, they're going to get down to movies where it's like, we don't, you can stop this now. Oh, yeah, I think there's sure. like a handful of movies that you actually would do this for. Yeah. But then when they get down to other, because th- I know. Sonic- Original Recipe Sonic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I think people want to see that. <laughs> would you want to see that? Look, and again, it's it's going to, but be, again, because it's this, it's it's just Hollywood being Hollywood and feeding this machine where it's like, yeah. Yeah, speaking of Deadpool, mm. where, you know, as soon as Deadpool was a success, they're like, all right, more R-rated superhero <laughs> movies. Let's, let's churn it out. Now it's going to be like, all right, more re-edits of existing movies. Let's churn them out yep. until we get to one. Yes. That isn't. That people are like we have zero interest in this, and then they'll be like, "Whoop, we went too far now. Yeah, what's what's the next trend?" Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh, Green Lantern re re re-edited of Green uh, Lantern. I'd re I I'd watch it probably. No. Just get Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi in a room. I like for a bit. Get them to put up. Get them make them up so they look like their their selves in whenever they came out, twenty thirteen yep. or whatever it was, twenty eleven. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah, and doesn't matter. and just have them riff in a room. Yeah. Because I think it's funny because every time they get together now, they pretend like they've never met. Yeah. <laughs> Which I really enjoy. I enjoy that ongoing joke. Yeah. Anyways, apparently, uh, this is from Deadline, Henry Cavill is in talks to come back as Superman. Uh-huh. What they say is he could come back in a number of different ways, not in a standalone film, though I've got more information he on that. He could come back in a car. Yeah. He could come back in a plane. He could come back on a Segway. Yes. That's that's so very he could Superman. could tunnel up from under the earth. Yeah. If you're looking to bring back Superman 2013... On a Segway would be the perfect... <laughs> I think so, <laughs> Don't yeah. you think? That would be yeah. the perfect... The Segway could have entrance. its own little cape. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, but there are... Uh, the sources... Or would the Segway have the cape up here? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, here. Right, that's right. A couple of capes. Mm-hmm. So, but comicbook.com have said that it seems like he might act as like the Hulk in the MCU or a Nick Fury type where he makes cameos. So what I don't understand about that is necessarily... Yes. Let's say he shows up in Aquaman 2 uh-huh. and he's like, I'm putting together a team and Aquaman's like... Yeah, I'm in that. I'm in that scene. <laughs> with the job, with we the already had League. an adventure. Yeah. So comicbook.com is saying yes. this. Look, I sometimes respect their, their opinions <laughs> yeah, and their sure. skills. But what I'm saying is that if you make Superman that character, mm. then it's just a series of, of hasty explanations as to why he's not helping out in that exact scenario. Yeah, right. Like, he yeah. Showed, like Aquaman's like, oh, I've got a, this, this oil tank is sinking and Superman has to be like, well, it's good to see you, but I can't <laughs> help you at all. Yeah. Because... Um, Kryptonite is kryptonite in the water. Yeah. So I've got to go. I won't, I won't obviously yeah. be having anything to do with that. I like the idea of him showing up to different members of the existing Justice League uh-huh. and asking them to return. It's right. like Wonder Woman, uh, we're, I'm putting together a team. Uh-huh. And he's, again, she's like, yes, the team that I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I'm still on the, I still have the membership card. It's yeah. It. Or maybe he'd be like, well, there's a new membership card, <laughs> yeah. but I don't have any on me. So you'd have to come back to the, the headquarters and I'll give you a new membership card. Or maybe there's never- a point you got you got you got a points balance still on your membership card. So if you want to exchange that for, for things, we, yeah, we really appreciate it. That's what do you like ancient just- art? I've got some. Yeah. I've got some. You can trade it in with your. I points. can also just steal you some, but it won't matter because no right, I can do anything. Me. I'm yeah. a god in this universe. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Maybe though, because he he died, his brain isn't right, so he's just Perfect. like yeah, yeah. But uh, so they've mentioned maybe uh, the ones that they it's going to be the ones that they haven't filmed yet. Right. So it won't be the Batman, which is currently filming. It'll be like your Aquaman 2, your Shazam 2. Wonder Woman's already right. done, unless they do an extra thing. So what's what, what's a scenario in which he could come back and it wouldn't seem weird and out of place? Advice? Um, he goes to the I think advice. I think Shazam would be a good opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, he was sort of in that movie. You saw that clip, I assume. That the one, the director. David, the David F. Sandberg. He put, put up, up and it was, it was a re-edit. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, where, where? It's Henry Cavill. It's the fi- the final scene of that movie where we originally Superman shows up, but you don't see his face. But in this version, it pans up, and he's got a very long <laughs> neck. It's very, it's funny, it's funny stuff. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, Shazam. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Because that it, happens in the comics a lot. Uh, well, see, that's the thing. That, that's kind of where I was going with that. It's that it it makes more sense that Superman could show up and cameo in a Shazam movie because all of. Shazam slash Captain Marvel's opponents are, are magical yes. in a lot of instances. You know, in the comic books, that's traditionally where Superman has a big weakness. Yes. So he wouldn't just be like, well, I could just show up and beat all these people up and leave. Yeah. I can show up and give you some advice. And then get beaten and up. Then, and then I'll get beaten up, yeah. exactly. And it'd be like, well, I've got to go, but good luck kind of thing. So yeah. that, would, that would work, I yeah, guess. Yeah, totally. Uh, so the idea behind that, uh, it's also The Rock for years has been talking about how 
this character could beat up Superman and whatever. So I uh-huh. think he's also been kind of teasing that a version of Superman will be involved. Oh, right, and okay. the Black Adam movie, who knows, because yeah. that's a different movie from the right, Shazam right, right. 2. Because, mm. the, and the, because Shazam has kind of a lighter tone as well, Yeah, you could presumably have them have a battle and then Superman gets punched into space. Yes. And then he's out of it for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Like that wouldn't be, you wouldn't, people wouldn't be championing the bit being like, when's Superman going to come back and fix this? You'd be like, you just cut to him floating around in orbit. I think people would go insane if they punched Superman out of a fight. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but this version of Superman can be knocked out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. You can write it whatever way you want. I guess you could also say, okay, uh, you could even maybe say that, you know, Superman came back at the end of Justice League, but then his powers are on the fritz or he yep. used them all up to defeat Steppenwolf or something like that. So you could have him as a depowered Superman yeah. for, for appearances where he's like, I'm just here as Clark Kent. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. That's what people want to see. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, but John Campy actually mentioned over on his YouTube channel that don't mm-hmm. take it as like 100% oh, yes. fact, but oh, this yes. is the rumblings. That J.J. Abrams, who we know has signed a deal with Warner Brothers and DC, is going to be probably directing the Superman movie. It's Superman in some form, not, not really 100% on the actor yet, uh-huh. but the speculation is that it's probably Cavill at this point. Yeah, right. Because it would be smarter marketing-wise Henry Cavill is a bigger star now than he's ever been. That's true. So physically I, and from a and emotionally, emotionally he's grown. emotionally bigger. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, you 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 wouldn't recast it unless you had to, unless mm-hmm. it was too much money or I yeah. don't know. He got cancelled for choking somebody, say potentially. Did he do that, James? No, some, another member. No, of I Justice know. I <laughs> Good, yes. So it's uh. So that's the kind of that's the current thinking on that at the moment. Mm. So, how do you feel about a JJ Abrams Superman movie? Good, actually. Be- bearing in mind he he was going to do he wrote Superman Fly Flyby, by, but he also mentioned, and we've got a video on that. But he also but mentioned, he also ruined Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, but he also made a really good Star Wars. Yeah, I that's think. That's true. Yeah. And look, I know he kind of gets flack, and you know, from us included, but he he can make and has made great movies. That's true. Yeah. And I think he's probably got the right tone and kind of sentiment and understanding of the character to do a good yeah. Superman movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if he indeed is doing one. And also what helps is that most of the Superman mythos is fairly set in stone mm. and he can't just mystery box us for an entire movie. That's true. What's thing. in the Phantom Zone, he says. And we're like, we Zod, Zod's he went probably in, there. in there. Yeah, that's right. No, he died actually, didn't he? Yeah, there's a, there's a Rubber Zod in that Fallout movie. Yeah. Remember Rubber Zod? Yeah, I do remember. We yes. didn't mention that in the video. I feel like we should have mentioned Rubber Zod. There was so much ground to cover in that video. It's so. the longest video we've ever made. Oh. Yeah. And the best? No. Nah. It's oh, a shame. <laughs> oh, Ben will make it the best. Yeah, for sure. If anything. So to be honest, though, I'm really happy if he f- pops up in things, but I want a Superman movie. I just, be nice if they I'll, got one just, right. Please. Yeah. And I think I honestly think J.J. Abrams would be a very good fit. Do you feel the same? I think so too. Uh, yeah. And, he, and you, you know, just – and at this point I think we're like well, we're brushing away any prior continuity that doesn't people don't like. Yep. We're just moving out of it. So exactly. just – yeah, and again, you know, and again – there are there are plenty of Superman stories in the comic books that I love, and plenty that are pretty average. And yeah. I don't go well. I don't, can't see how this next Superman story will be any good if that last one was bad. Yeah, you exactly. just go, just move move don't forward, make it, it standalone. It'll be fun. Do you remember yeah. the one where he walked across America? Yeah, <laughs> I th- yeah, but I I think you're right. If 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 he can get the tone right, if he can make it, you know, Christopher Reeve, but not stuck in the past. Yes, use Cavill. You're talking about like the optimism. Yeah, the yeah. optimism, mm. exactly. Yeah. And the shooting lasers out of your eyes. That's all you need. Yeah. And the freeze breath. Yes. Which they did put in Justice League. And the S that comes off your chest. and Cellophane S. Cellophane S, yeah. Did, could he only use that because he was in the Fortress of Solitude? Because remember he used like holograms and stuff as well? It's a bit vague, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like that movie. Even could, he though, only, could he only... Um, we're talking about Superman 2, by the way. Could he, could, he only, could he only rebuild the Great Wall of China with his eyes because he was in China? <laughs> See Maybe. what I'm saying? Something with the polar caps, I'd imagine, Maybe or the hem- how close yeah, you are to the yeah, equator. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. So, so in the in the south south of the equator, you can use rebuild. Uh, you can use rebuild walls with your eyes. Yes. North of the equator, you can use cellophane S. Is in ch- the middle. Oh, chain, sorry. Chainsaw hands. Yeah, no. So I don't. Yeah, I, I thought you'd mixed up mix, mixed up your equators, but you hadn't. I'd mixed my equators That's up. That's right. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, Justice League apparently is expensive. The new, the, the oh, it's Snyder more than Cup. thirty million dollars. Yes. Apparently, yeah. we did add it to that video. I got Collings to add it, um, so we didn't get comments about it, but we still did. <laughs> uh, Warner Media Chairman Bob Greenblatt said, "I wish it was just thirty million dollars." That's how he said it. <laughs> uh, 
we had to go through unions and get certain things clear uh, with them about what we were doing. Uh, is the Snyder Cut a new movie or is it a recut? There's lots of complexity that the fan community doesn't know about, oh. which makes sense. It's not just put money into special effects and redubbing lines and whatever, writing lines. Yeah. It's you got to... It, it's a new thing and yeah, that changes right. everything. And, and if you mm. use somebody's pre-existing visual effects on a new thing, you've got to pay them again. Yeah, you've you got to give them $100 cash in hand. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you had some surly union like uh, like grips on, on set originally to stand around, mm. be surly. You've got to get them back in. You've got to get them back in, that's right. If they were to a, stand around in the editing booth that's and be right. like, uh, no. Nah. They have to wear the same plaid shirt rolled that's up right, with the exactly. sleeves. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you have to pay for that dry cleaning and... Sort all that out, obviously. Yeah, it's all right. about continuity, even behind the scenes, is what that's I'm saying, Mason. That's it right, all yeah. counts. <laughs> you can feel it, even if you don't know it was there. Absolutely, you can, yeah. But that is all the news. Unless you've got more news, there's probably more uh, news. Look, I feel I like I've missed news this week. You may have missed news, but that's okay. Uh, did you see a, a fan, a rabid fan of the Marvel movies uh, oh, yes. put every single scene I did see in, that. In, in Marvel movie chronological history into chronological order. order, right? I skimmed it. I'm like, I can't with this right now. <laughs> like, Here's the thing. Hang on. I'll, I'll see blowing. if I can find it. It's a very impressive. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, that's not, yeah. Uh, I got to this and I uh, it went one, prologue of Thor, the Dark World, obviously thousands of years ago. Uh, sure. Infinity, whatever's. What's next? Uh, Two, flashback sequence of Thor Ragnarok. And at that point, I'm like, I'm not really sure what that is, to be honest. <laughs> so, Celestial stuff, is it? No. Probably maybe Hela. Maybe. maybe Hela in the past. They're trapping her in a How thing. would you know when the Celestials and the Stones from Guardians of the Galaxy in the flashback? Like, what's that from? Or uh, would well, you that's, put- that's number seven. The prologue of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, wait. Cut, prologue of Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. But- Nine is prologue of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, but also that prologue is actually in real time and they're watching a video of the past. Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. If you're showing a flashback on a monitor in a screen, for example, like Bucky killing uh, Tony Stark's parents, because they're watching on a monitor, Yeah. what are you you doing there? I guess if there wasn't a scene, Mm. unless it cut to the scene. I did cut to the scene. And you would have to put those separately, I think. But then Lincoln with a bit of red string. Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. Yes, Abraham Lincoln's also involved, yes. (laughs) Great, terrific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so that's all good and... Good for you, Tony Goldmark. You've so done it again for the all, first time. So the next step is obviously somebody's going to put these in actual order. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, take sure. the scenes and nope. actually... Re- I wonder what yeah. that would actually play like. Nonsense, I'd imagine. I think so, nonsense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you'd get, eventually get to the point where movies, you'd just be playing whole movies, but yeah. then you'd get stuff like, uh, you know, like Ant-Man and the Wasp also happens at the same time as Infinity War, maybe? Oh, so you'd have to watch them on multiple monitors yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Okay, I like that. Yeah, you like things, and that's great. Anyway, like, like a bad Zoom meeting. You're just gonna start watching multiple ones. That's right. Exciting. Now let's pause so I can we can segue naturally mm-hmm. into a thing that we will now talk about. Are oh, we gonna talk about it now? Yep. Huh. Mason, all this talk of uh, extending cuts of things where they'll take a movie that people aren't very happy with and make a Potentially slightly better version of that. Certainly longer. (laughs) Certainly longer. Not always, Mm. as we'll talk about, because I do want to talk about extended cuts slash director's cuts. Oh, yes. Of movie cuts, Mm -hmm. you know? Do you feel like there is a difference between extended cut and director's cut? I mean, it's in the the words are different. (laughs) The words are certainly different. There would be, wouldn't there? The intent is often different. Yes, I see what you're saying. Uh, Yes, I believe there is. What would you you put that down to? And I I would, my guess would be in a lot of instances the director's cut is a shorter cut. Sometimes you would sure, think. yeah. Surely the you know the, the veteran directors know enough to know that not everything they make is necessarily going to be genius. Yeah, or you know they will do alternate takes or scenes that don't work once they've been filmed or finished or what have you. And exactly. they, and the inclination would be to cut everything out. Like I know there are plenty of directors out there who learn that their movie has been given an extended cut and they're like, I wouldn't have done this. Yeah, Why exactly. Because yeah. often it's just used to sell like a different version of it to extend it out. Mm. A director's cut is very much a, a different thing where it's like, well, like this wasn't exactly what I wanted to do at the time necessarily, but there's different variations on that. I actually took a couple of quotes from some famous directors Oh yes, uh, from Wikipedia. Don't, people <laughs> think that we don't research, but I, I skim this. You put like in the director's name <laughs> and you click on it and you hope it's a page that immediately leads you to what exactly you were looking right for in the first place. No. And if it doesn't, you don't bother. <laughs> to be fair, I did do I did actually do a fair bit of research into this. This first part, not as much, because it is just on Wikipedia. But James Cameron says, what I put into theatres is the director's cut. 
Nothing was cut that I didn't want cut. All the extra scenes we've added back in are just for the a bonus for the fans. And I think he said that about Avatar in particular. Because yeah, uh-huh. he does have some other extended cuts of things, which or director's cuts. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Right, We're going to mix that up in this. Don't even worry about it, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that's an interesting idea that for directors that often the version that goes to cinema is like, well, this is the tightest version of this that um, there can be. But at the same time, I think that is only afforded to certain directors. Or tours. Yes. Like your James Cameron. Like, like your Christopher, Christopher Nolan's. Nolan. Yes. Jinx, you can't say anything else for the rest of the episode. Fuck you, then I'm leaving. Fuck this shit, I don't need this. <laughs> Oh no, I called his bluff and he did exactly what I would have done if he'd said jinx. Oh no. Um, but yeah, like you're, you're auteur, like I guess if you are like, you know, a kind of a, a journeyman director who just yeah. takes, takes a job, you know, wants to make the best product they can, but is not invested in it as a creator of that thing. Sure. I guess they would be like, sure. Yeah. Or even if they are, and then the version that goes to cinema is like, well, I didn't want this version yeah uh-huh. which we've seen happening but i got the recently. money so so whatever yeah i'm rich and that's how do cool. you feel about just an extended cut of anything generally uh generally uh, interesting because i think it shows it can, it can often highlights the reasons why they're not in there yep mm-hmm. and often also like a home release can act as an entirely different thing which can be a good thing i've got another quote here yeah if, if you don't mind me if yeah, we're sure. doing quotes mm-hmm which I am. Yes. Uh, Peter Jackson talks about how he considers the, like, the theatrical cut of Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies to be the final director's cut, uh, mm-hmm. but within the constraints of like a theatrical kind of distribution. Yes. But the extended cuts, which, are, which we will talk about famously that he's made for these six movies, they're produced for fans of the material so they could see yeah. all the shots and, and develop more of the script to make it close to J.R.R. Tolkien's original vision and that was, was cut for running time and other issues. See, yeah. that's my question. My next yeah. question would be, if you like an extended cut, how often have you watched an extended cut? Sure. And that is my question to you, James. This is an actual question. It's not hypothetical. Oh, that, well, look. I think we should we should start on Lord of the Rings because yeah. I think the Lord of the Rings movies that are in cinemas are terrific. Yeah, uh, yeah. as is. Yeah. That being said, whenever I watch them again, which to be fair, I haven't done in a, in quite a long time, which I do want to get back to because I want to cover them for Caravan of Garbage yeah, at right. some point. But you'd watch the extended version, hundred percent. That's I would. interesting. Yeah, I I think they're and not not that they're better movies, but I huh. don't mind that the fact that there is more of them because it does help flesh out the story. Right. Not in major ways that necessarily affect the flow or certain characters, but at the same time you get things like the death of Saruman is not mm. in the th- like Christopher Lee doesn't appear in that final movie theatrically, uh-huh. but then you see him get stabbed in the special edition or the extended cut, or the director's mm. cut, whatever you want to call. It. We're going to mix that up a lot. So <laughs> apologies. But that's a whole other element of that story, which yeah, I, was, right. I wanted to see. I think that's interesting because I generally, like, let's say I bought a Blu-ray and it had the, the theatrical release and an extended cut on it. I feel I would watch the extended cut and think to myself, well, this has this has added a lot to the lore of what the, whatever universe this is in. Yeah. I'm excited to see some stuff that was cut out or, you know, that, that expands my ex- understanding of this movie or what have you. But I feel like if... I wasn't satisfied with the theatrical cut. I wouldn't have bought the Blu-ray in the first place. Yes. If I was like, boy, the only, you know, boy, I didn't, I did kind of didn't like this movie because it felt like it was missing pieces. I wish I could see the extra seven. Minutes. I don't think I would go and <laughs> then buy an extended version. I would feel, I it would, it would feel cheap to me. So I would feel cheated. I think for you, it's something that you have to love or at least yeah. like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're interested in seeing more. And it's yeah. not necessarily because you, you're like, this isn't finished. It's because I love this universe and that they've created. Yeah, I feel if if anything, to especially to market an extended cut as well. This is what we didn't see in theaters because and 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 the big wigs and you would know that because you saw an incomplete movie at the cinema. You idiots! I'm I'm mad about that. I (laughs) don't I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, often they cut down run times to fit more sessions in and and yeah yeah yeah. um, Etc. But again, if I'm seeing a nonsensical movie because it appears to have pieces missing, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not going back for another dip on that. No, I've caught you talking about Justice League. <laughs> yeah, unless it's free, I guess. <laughs> unless it's free, I guess. Mm. So uh, on the back of Lord of the Rings, though, because we're going to run through a bunch of directors and extended cuts mm-hmm. for this and what was missing yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and what, what was put back in and, what, and whatever, we're, we're going to hit on every one of them. So if you've got a favourite, don't worry, so we covered we'll it. Cover it. Yeah, don't worry. But off the back of that, saying how much I love those Lord of the Rings extended cuts because they are seamless and they add to the story in, mm-hmm. in a huge way. I will never watch the extended cut of The Hobbit, all of those movies. Yeah, right. There is no part of me that – I don't want to watch those again, let alone watch more of them, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. I, I only watched the third one of those, and I feel I got my money's worth. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> I mean, we'll probably go back to them at some point. But oh, come had, on. How, 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 what would you watch for the, for the Lord of the Rings? Would you watch the extended cut of that? Well, I have, but again, I don't think I'd go back. Yeah, well, I, you're going to have to at some point, I'd imagine. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but you wouldn't choose to, is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think, but, yeah. you know, just knowing that, well, what, happ- what happened to Sarah Man? Oh, he got stabbed. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Like, is, is that scene, and again, I can't particularly, it doesn't, it doesn't jump to mind immediately. He falls, off, it, he falls and he lands on a big wheel. Is it so visually spectacular that you would? It's a, I just though? think it's, an, it's a neat scene that, Okay. Is, is in it. And yeah, it looks good because they do the special effects. They make it properly. Uh-huh. You know, it's yeah, not, right. it's, you know, it's Did the way it is. Did they finish the special effects for the home video release or do you think yes. they, they did? Okay, yes, right. absolutely. Cause uh-huh. they would come out maybe nine months after the, the, the movie came out. Oh uh-huh, yeah. Kind of in, pre- in preparation for like the next one uh-huh. normally. Those I feel. Uh, so that was, that was a, a, a finished extended cut without a furious fan demand for yeah us. that was it seemed to be always the plan and uh-huh. but i mean those the special edition or the special features on those things as well are a whole other story unto itself if you've got the time uh-huh. i know you're not going to do this but a lot of people have <laughs> just pouring through all, all the way they, yeah. they made those movies uh-huh. it's just incredible like, has that also died in a way yes because they, there's no money in it in in making yeah. of documentaries that right. being said then you get like the mandalorian for example now there's a disney plus show dedicated to the making of right so i think it's probably going to shift digitally now also when you buy things for example i bought batman v superman recently for 27 dollars on uh, the playstation store it's the only place i could get it it was 16 dollars at jb hi-fi i'm just saying you son of a bitch but it was i i it, it <laughs> you'd was, have to leave your house though so. yeah that's right but it was two. It was two movies. It yeah, was right. the original and the, uh-huh. and the extended. Uh-huh. But like, I don't want both digitally right. <laughs> for that much. But you know, I had to yeah, yeah, watch yeah, it yeah. obviously. But yeah, I'm not sure what my point is there. But uh, the, the Mandalorian. Yeah, that is that is to prevent people from the, the new tactic. I guess is prevent people from cancelling their Disney Plus subscriptions until another season of that show comes out. That is no or, doubt. Or a next, the, the next big thing comes out. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we'll see a resurgence. Yeah, definitely. Making of. I'll watch a. I'll watch a Falcon Winter Soldier making of. Yeah, definitely. Well, here it is right here. Oh, terrific. Now, this is a remote for an air conditioner. Oh. Huh. It's not really. Does this screen any, doesn't even play like proper movies. Does it have any Easter eggs or hidden stuff? It's got a couple of batteries. Oh, my God. Oh, they're mostly flat, I think, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you could eat them. Well, any other extended director's cut that you want to go? Oh, is that it? Are we done? Yeah, that's, 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 the, only, that's the only one we've got to there. Great, terrific. Because uh, I've got a bunch here. Okay, give, give me one more sure. and then I'll, then I'll find a primo one for you. You're going to love. Well, one of the most famous ones uh, is Blade Runner because there are something like eight cuts of this film. Mm-hmm. And that's, of course, if you don't even go into fan cuts, which I'm sure there's a million of those as well. But in 2007, there was the final cut of Blade Runner. I've been told by a number of sources that is the one that I want to, that I should rewatch. Yes. I think with Blade Runner, the only way you can really go wrong is if you watch the original one with the narration. I think you can watch the, the, the others. There are added scenes of unicorns and dreams and things like that and bits and pieces. But as, I think as long as you watch the one without the narration, mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm. probably doing okay. And I, I actually don't. And there also, also, of course, there's the happy ending as well, which they took take out, I think, from this version. Who knows? A lot of these I've kind of lost track of <laughs> which sections of movies I've seen, what clips I've just watched on YouTube. You know, I've, uh-huh. I've kind of mixed all these together. But no, I think if, if you had to watch a version of Blade Runner, it would be without the internal monologue and with some of the unicorn dreams, I guess. And at the end, they don't have the happy ending where they drive off. Uh-huh. And, and, you know. Do you think that if you were shown a version of Blade Runner that was just a variety of clips from YouTube put together, would you notice? <laughs> I mean, I probably, yeah. I, it's a movie so? I know reasonably Like there's well. some narration but not all the narration? Oh, then I don't know at that point, do I? Right, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I think Blade Runner's famously just kept being tinkered with over the years. But now that I think that it has a sequel, mm-hmm. you don't really need to change any of that because any kind of questions that you're trying to answer by changing the narrative is now kind of been wrapped up in a movie that nobody saw. Yes, <laughs> at the, exactly. At the cinema. Yeah. What else though? Okay, so I looked at a bunch of lists of these are movies that have been greatly in- improved by a director's cut or the extended improved. cut. Okay. And on every list, Waterworld. Yep, I got that one here as well. What do, what do you what do you know about it? Uh, I know it's you know I, I know it's an exa- insanely expensive movie. Went seventy five million dollars over budget or something like that. That's a lot of money, James. especially in nineteen ninety five when that came out. It famously it broke up the friendship between Kevin Costner and the director. Apparently, <sighs> like they had a personal friendship. Uh, there was delays from hurricanes breaking out during shooting. Um, CGIing hair and bald spots. They had three hours of footage. 
uh, and the theatrical cut was just over two hours. So they knocked a lot of it out. Yeah. Well, I think the idea was that then for the home release, any version they show now, where, what you buy or what's on television, it's the three hours. Oh, good. And apparently it's – and that's the only version I think I've seen because – I didn't see this at the cinema when I was no, a kid, did you? No, no. But apparently, and look. I didn't even see the spiritual sequel, The Postman. <laughs> spiritual? Yep. Yeah, I guess it is because it's about a man and he's, man, he's delivering he's a man mail for America or whatever. Exactly, yeah. yes. But I've never hated Waterworld and maybe it's because I haven't seen that two-hour chopped up version because apparently a lot of the reviews, reviews at the time were like, this is probably a good movie somewhere, but this version of it isn't. And I think it's fine. And apparently they use better takes of scenes. There's more humor and things like that. They Maybe I've only ever seen the – It's entirely possible. And again – I mean, and they chop things up for television as well. So who well, really knows? Well, that's the thing knows? because, like, my, all my experience with movies as a kid was a movie, you know, obviously chopped up with ads on television. Yep. So they were all three hours long anyway. Yeah, so how long must have Waterworld been? It could have been one of those things that played over two, two nights. Two nights, Like right? they did with Dances with Wolves, uh, I famously remember They would have, the wouldn't they? Co- a co- it would have been another Costner epic. Costner epic. That's right, exactly. It, what's interesting though, and this same can maybe be said for Justice League, depending on what happens with it, the Hateful Eight is, seemed to start the trend of taking a movie, adding stuff to it, then breaking it up into episodic adventures. I think The Hateful Eight was excruciatingly long, even <laughs> in its theatrical release. It wasn't my favourite one either. I think there's a good movie in there. But mm. I am interested, and I haven't done it yet, because on Netflix it is four episodes and it's two hours and ten minutes now as opposed to 167, plus there's credits in that as well. Uh-huh. But I, I do wonder how it does play episodically and maybe knowing that I can watch 40 minutes now and watch you know, 40 minutes tomorrow. Maybe it's something that you could enjoy more like that as opposed mm. to having to sit with the whole thing. Yeah, but I don't know if it even worked that way because it's interesting to me that movie, and it was done this way intentionally, it's kind of framed like a stage play, you know? Yeah, right. It's like the one set, like it's in a uh-huh. little cabin and everyone's walking about and drinking poison coffee or whatever's going sure. on. <laughs> so I would be interested to revisit uh, that. Just what are some s- good movies and TV shows that are set up like that? Good movie, um, Jake's Girls with Alan Alder. It's set in an apartment and he's visited by the ghosts of his girlfriends. Jake's huh. Women, is it? Huh. <laughs> Let me check. It's a stage play. You know why I had that thought? It's because the Mario games are... I mean, they're not one room, are they? No, or some not. of them are, the earlier but ones. But they're right. set up as if they are their stage plays. Oh, they are, they're, they're aren't they? are productions, yeah. right? Or all is it, the, all just the, three is maybe? Well, three definitely is. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, the circumstantial evidence is that all of the characters are friends outside of that game. Is he jumping on people? To their deaths, yes, absolutely. He's not friends with the extras, obviously. He'll okay. kill an extra. He's the star. He's the star, obviously, and he'll crush as many extras, uh, Coopers, as he needs to. Yeah. He's friends with Bowser outside. That's why they're always playing tennis together. Oh, and doing or Mario Karting. Doing Mario Karting. Doing Mario Kart. Outside. Yeah. Okay. What, do you reckon Bowser pushed for it to be like, can we call it Bowser Kart? <laughs> no. Maybe it's only called Mario Kart in Mario's mind. Oh, okay. And they just play along with him. They're yeah, like, right. yeah, we'll go and play Mario Kart with you, Mario. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay, Mario. Yeah, that might exactly be it. I, I guess, so you're saying things framed like a stage play. Yes. Well, could you say the movie Buried could be framed like a stage play? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I mean more in the sense of that the pullback and reveal is that it is, in fact, oh. it's effectively a stage play. What about Birdman? Isn't that like... <laughs> I, 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 oh, I see what's happening here. You're confusing... Uh, <laughs> You're confusing movies that are like a stage play with movies that have but the it, stage. But in it has them. like the theatrical nature. Oh, I of guess it, it does. Yeah, you know okay, what I mean? You're right. It's yeah, kind yeah. of the way that yeah. it's it's not a stage play, obviously. No, yeah. Uh-huh. No, I don't know. I'd okay. be interested if people that have any thoughts on that. Yeah. You know what? It's just because I watched a video this week about the video game Pathologic, which hmm. is a, 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 a sort of a pandemic related uh, video game in which it's revealed that it's actually just people performing on a stage. That's fun. Fun, right? Wouldn't it be great if that was real life? Oh my God, I'd feel so good. The dream! Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know about Richard Donner's Superman 2? Yes, vaguely. People compare it to what's happening now with the DC properties, but Richard Donner was kicked off and Richard Lester, I think his name is. This is a real Dick York, Dick Sargent situation, isn't it? Isn't it? it? Mm -hmm. Uh, So he... he, (laughs) Do you know what I'm referring no, to? No, I just went along with it. <laughs> the movie, the TV show Bewitched. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Because there, the, there were two Darrens. There were two Darrens. Yes. They make a joke about it in the Bewitched movie. Oh, do Will they? Farrell's like, they swapped out the Darrens and nobody noticed, mm. and which is true. Yeah. They did, did notice. Did they? I, I bet noticed. people didn't really. I knew as a kid. <laughs> You're like, who's this I'm guy? I'm like, decades ago, they replaced the Darrens. <laughs> do you think that's. Do, I don't think people would have really noticed at the time. 
in all honesty. They're, they're visibly I mean, different men. This, yeah, no, I understand that, but I think people would have just rolled with it. Oh, of I course, feel, yeah. Like, I don't it was think a different cared, era. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And also you'd just go like, oh, she's a witch. She probably was like, I want him to look different. <laughs> Do you think? Do you think that was the in-universe explanation? I'm sick of looking at this fucking the guy's people, face. The people in the neighborhood—they all—it was like a Twilight Zone episode. The people in the neighborhood knew yeah. that they daren't say anything, no, for fear because they change their own face. Change their, their own their face, face, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So Richard Donner famously kicked off Superman two. He filmed one and two back to back. Richard Lester finished it off. Mm-hmm. I think the original Superman movie two is is good, regardless. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't think I don't know if you know if I've sat down and watched the whole Richard Donner thing, but they went back decades later and they used some kind of rehearsal footage and some other things to piece it back together and pe- people seem to prefer it on the whole. Mm-hmm. But it's not a fully completed project and you can st- see a lot of the scenes but you get a better idea of what it's supposed to be as a movie. And I think the right move definitely would have been to leave Richard Donner on there because have you seen Superman 3? Fucking atrocious. <laughs> it really is. A terrible film. And 4, even worse. No, I like 4 because okay. at least it's about Superman. I guess that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what what is the what's the major narrative twist of of the Donner cut, do you know? I couldn't even tell you. Okay. <laughs> I get, I think it's I think it's more serious, less silly as as a big part okay, of it. Okay, right. Yeah. But no, I, that's something I probably should watch at some point. Because I'm, I'm sure I've like skimmed through like. Is clips there? On YouTube. Did, they, did they make the change? This is definitely a change somewhere where the criminals, these Kryptonian super criminals, are arrested. There is a but version the, of but that. In, a version that, in most versions, they just fall to their deaths. And I know, I know a lot of this because people often comment. I've got a Superman kill count video, uh-huh. and people say, "Well, they didn't kill the Kryptonians because you know in the A version you see them alive, but." A lot of the time, that only happens in a in a TV cut. Oh, as I well. see. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, but he killed them. Well, they're falling to their death, and they go, "Oh, we're fine, actually. Yeah. Well, actually, we're just going to fall infinitely, so we're technically alive." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's food down here. Mm, yum yum. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what else to say about that, but I think that's interesting that they got to go back. You got to go back and finish that years later. Mm. I've just written here: Star Wars changes, doesn't it? Boy, does it? You're not yeah. wrong. I mean, because they're technically the special editions; they're extended, aren't they? Does he still? Re- does George Lucas? Does he? Like everybody knows who I'm talking about. Does George <laughs> Lucas still retain an editing right now? I don't believe so. I think the last change he made was the McClunky thing before he yeah, handballed right. it off. Just a little, just a little bombshell yeah. to leave. And there's speculation that the reason why we haven't seen the original cut is because that was worked into the deal with Disney, where they could only show and sell the version that he finalized eventually. Oh. I, I think guess. that will change eventually regardless because they're Disney and they do whatever they want. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, But uh, yeah. One day he's going to get a letter in his mailbox that's like, mm. Dear George, you don't, you don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we, remo- we removed you from reality using yeah. lawyers. And we shaved and, your beard. And we can do whatever we want now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then again, I, I also wouldn't put it past them that they are just holding off on these versions, mm. on the original versions, because eventually they're going to do a big kind of – Push on Disney Plus or a home release or whatever yeah. either. I, There's I either going to be a lull know. or an anniversary yeah. or something like that, yeah. You mentioned earlier about a movie that maybe might be shorter than the one that was re- released originally, a director's cut, if you will. Oh, yes. Uh, do you have one? Because I do. Look, when I said that, James, <laughs> I was just stalling for You're time. You're just spinning your wheels. I was just spinning my wheels, but there's got to be one, right? There is, because Alien in 2003, well, there's more than one, but mm-hmm. Alien in 2003, the director's cut of the original film, it's shorter by a minute, so it moves at a bit more of a clip. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's quite a slow-paced film. Uh-huh. I don't think it's... Not excruciatingly slow. I think it's very compelling. It's a slow burn sci-fi movie. But they also add a scene which was refer- which is referred to as the egg morphing scene. Do you know? Oh, about I see. This? So some was taken out, but some was put yes. in. So there's the 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 difference is one minute. I see. Yes, okay. exactly. So they you- didn't speed up one. They didn't speed up one particular scene. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was, there was a big controversy recently where it was like Netflix are going to you, you can watch the movies at 0.5 extra speed or whatever, mm-hmm. but. I don't let people do that if they want. I don't see why it's a big deal. Like if people want to do that, do you care? Apparently people listen to like our podcast that way. I think there should be a, an option, but there should be some if you're the director of a movie, you should be able you should be able you should get first refusal. Oh. But if you do that, people get to send you nasty emails. There's a button. <laughs> Or just em- just uh, just emojis or something. You get to send yeah, a re- right. you get to send a reaction to the director. That's fair. Mm. I appreciate that. But so, do you know about the egg morphing scene? No, tell me about it. So it's where they go into. A, she goes into a room, Ripley, or another crew member. I can't remember. I have seen it. Like I've seen it in the movie. But some of the crew are slowly being kind of digested and turned into alien eggs. Mm-hmm. So I think the idea is then in alien law, if one of these xenomorphs gets free and gets yep. loose, 
in the absence of a queen, it can make an alien egg. Right. Uh-huh, yeah, sure. turn a person into an egg. Okay. But if it's got a queen, that she's just like, oh, I'll make a thousand. Yeah, it's very vague, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Movies, though, you know? And yeah. that's great. Well, that would have changed the whole continuity of the alien averse, mm. to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> Which they did anyway when they were like, well, David made him. <laughs> Didn't David he just? The, David, David the Android made him. Yeah, he made him. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's cool. Yeah. I and mean, it doesn't even make sense really though because if David made them, what, why was that ship with the alien eggs on it like from like thousands of years in the past? Time travel. I fixed it. <laughs> yep, that's I right. I fixed it. Yep. But do you know about also the Aliens special edition? Uh, James Cameron. That's I'm sure that's the one I've watched the most. There's been a few. Yes. It's apparently it evolved over several years throughout the 80s and 90s. But eventually it's kind of settled on a version where uh, you probably remember this, but I, this is mostly every version, like you mentioned. But, you know, the start where it, she gets out and she looks like she's in a park, but it's actually like a telly screen wall. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. That's new. Uh, there's more. Of, you see the colony before the attack. So you oh, spend yeah. mm-hmm. a little bit of time with them. Uh, Ripley says goodbye to Hicks before she goes after Newt. They have like a final moment. Uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there are those extra scenes and. That's kind of the version that I mostly remember, I think. Yeah, so all of those things that I've mentioned, I'm like, yeah, no, I know that. That's the movie Aliens, but apparently not always. It's Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting when they take out, especially when it's a horror movie, when they take out elements that would more humanise the various yeah, right. characters or make you feel more sympathy for them. Sure. I'm sure there's I'm – sure, I'm sure, I bet we've got some – Oh, you know what? The original Dawn of the Dead, like the 1970s version. Okay, yeah. There's more character development in the director's cut. For the zombies? Yeah. Great. <laughs> We see their hobbies, we see their home life, but no, there's more. We see the wife straighten the, the, the tie of her husband. Yeah. <laughs> off you go, they they scruff the kid's hair, the zombie kid's hair, send him off to zombie school. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's there's more character. Bra- it's just braids written yeah. on a chalkboard. <laughs> there's more gore, there's more character development. Yeah, so right. maybe like 15 minutes more, I think. And, okay. And again, I'm not sure why you wouldn't do that. I mean, you want a brisk movie, but also yeah. an extra 15 minutes where we go, Oh, I care about that guy a little bit more. So when he dies... Do you think it's people assuming, the people who eventually are behind this final theatrical cut, that mm. people just want to get to the zombies? Do you think it's people just being like, they don't care about any of that stuff, they just want to see the... Yeah, I'd say so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I think you're right. Yeah, especially if that stuff is done well, mm. then yeah, you want to care about the people who are going to die. Yeah. You know, that makes sense to oh, me. Oh, here's one. I that love things that is what's going this, on. This movie sold me on the idea of the DVD. Yeah. And was like, the because the DVD was a gold mine. It's, that's the 40-year-old virgin. Right. Which is just, I Extra mean, that is, a, that is a movie that is almost exclusively improvised gags. Yeah. But obviously they didn't have enough room for all of it. So the mm. DVD is just like... Here's 20 minutes of Steve Grell screaming as people tear his hair off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? I know there's the, you know, I know your gay scene goes for like much longer. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, an extended yeah. sequence. There's yeah. also a lot of like, again, there's more humanizing of the characters. There's yeah. more the the guys just hanging out. And he gets is... older. By the end of the film, he's 42. Oh, my God. He's well, a 42-year-old virgin. Oh it's God. that much longer. My goodness. I feel like, though, with some Judd Apatow films, mm-hmm. they've now bled that over into other ones of his movies. Because if you yeah. look at, like, uh, what's the Adam Sandler one where he's a comedian, he gets cancer and whatever? Funny it's People. Funny People goes for a 1,000 years. Yeah. And I think that one's too long. But then if you look at This Is 40, which is technically a sequel to um, 40-Year-Old Virgin. Uh-huh. No, is it that one? It's Knocked Up. It's Knocked Up. It's I've said that wrong. Up, thank, thank God that you corrected <laughs> me on that. But that one is really long. Like that's like a two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's great. I think that movie's terrific and it benefits from spending time with these characters because that's what that movie is about. It's about yeah. this husband and wife you know, dealing with the fact that they're getting older and they kind of hate each other, but you know they also love each other at the same time. And yeah, I, that, that's Would a great. You say movie. it's very real, James. Yeah, it is. No, it is because it has. There's arguments in that movie that make it. it it's awkward to watch because you're like, yeah, this right. guy, this feels like a real mm-hmm. argument. I remember he, reading an interview or hearing an interview with Judd Apatow where he talked about how the the arguments that kind of evolved during the making of that and that they wrote. It's some of it was drawn from his experience because Leslie Mann, they're really married in real life, and others were like. How would Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann annoy themselves, annoy each other if they were married? So yeah, it was right, kind uh-huh. of a, This is kind of off topic, but I just thought that's an. I, that's one of his favorite movies of mine. Maybe because it's closest to my life. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah. Hmm. Ah, oh, you love Robocop, don't you? I do. Do you know there's a Robocop extended version? 
one minute extra of additional gory stuff, including Ed 209 uh, shredding that dude in the boardroom. Apparently it goes for longer. Yeah, I, oh, I know. I'm well aware. <laughs> Again, it's all it's all laid out on the trading cards that I had as a child. Oh, really? Murphy getting his hand shot off, all yeah. sorts of stuff. Oh, wait, just, is that not in the original? I can't remember, but it's yeah, definitely on the trading cards for children. I know, because I remember you showed me one, and one of your trading cards is like that dude who's melting in toxic waste. Yeah. These are for children. They are for children. And some men, some grown Have men. Have we talked about Mortal Kombat 11? On uh, this podcast, we haven't in real life. Not really, we? I don't like, think. Because there's a Robocop's in it now. <laughs> mm, absolutely. I'm going to, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting yeah. for a definitive version of mm-hmm. this version of Mortal Kombat. Now I'm going to get it. Yeah. And one of his fatalities, he shoots a guy through the dick. <sighs> That's so Robocop. But not, a, but it, I mean, in, in inimitable Mortal Kombat style, not only does he shoot the, uh, his opponent through the dick, he's already, he's also like flung a grenade behind them. So he shoots them through the dick and it goes through the grenade and then they explode into pieces. He knows what he's doing. You know, he's been around the block a few times. <laughs> Uh, that, and then he arrests the pieces. Good. But that also strikes me as out of character for Robocop because he's not sadistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's Mortal Kombat, isn't it? That's true. And it's probably Scorpion or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Robocop's a good movie, I think. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, no, it is. Of course it is. Yeah. You know about Caligula, right? No. Okay. It's this movie from the 70s. Uh, it's basically just like it's about... Roman shit. <laughs> it's like a sword and sandals I gathered movie, that. I'm right? aware of the Emperor Caligula. <laughs> yes, yes. So I don't know if you know this, but it was incredibly saucy for the time. For what era? Uh, the 70s, I believe, okay. if you want to look at uh, an exact date on that. But it exists at least 10 different officially released versions, ranging from a sub-90-minute television edit uh, for TV14, mm. later TVMA. Oh. Uh, and then there's also the unrated full pornographic version that exceeds 3.5 hours. Excuse so they, me? They spliced in like actual pornography into like the, the big kind of mass orgy scenes. Oh, I say they didn't get the actors of the movie to engage. No, 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 they didn't no, get no. them to make pornography. Yeah, no. But they put like, did they film their own pornography? Uh, yeah, I guess they did, yeah. But I guess it's all just nude people. So I guess you could- It's 81 actually. Okay. Yeah, ha- I mean, Helen Mirren's in it, Malcolm McDowell's in it. Like there's Peter O'Toole's in it. Peter O'Toole, am I right? What are you- <laughs> yeah. Oh, McDowell. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. Oh, it also says it was also released in 1979. So I guess, the, no, again, there's probably different versions of it. And it was probably blocked in. No, it was released in 1980 in the US, but in Italy in 1979. But, yeah, so it was like a very big deal at, at the time to obviously yeah. take a mainstream movie and then put just pornographic scenes in it. I remember when I uh, lived up north. There's a guy I, I lived in the area, John. I've talked about him before on my other less successful podcast, Suggestible. Porno John. Porno John. But he was like, do you want to come around and watch Caligula? And I'm like, do I want to watch a 1970s porno film with you? Uh-huh. No, I don't. Not really, John. And <laughs> then you did. And then I did, obviously. <laughs> but also, if you want to watch some pornos, Mason, mm-hmm. you don't need to sit through a three and a half hour movie. Unless it's a great movie. Maybe that was his pretense. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe was... it was, yeah. Look, uh, so, so the, the three Anyway, I regret half... turning him down is the point of that story. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could have made a great friend. <laughs> no, he was awful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what else? Here's one that I didn't know because the version I've seen, I guess, has always been the extended cut, uh, The Exorcist. Yeah, right. The scene where... Uh, the face on the wall is a part, isn't it? Yeah, but when the kid spider crawls down the yes. stairs... That that's, was a 99 edition or something, yeah, wasn't like it? Yeah, like 2000, I think. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. That's Why would you leave that out? That's the best. That's the least stupid thing in the movie. <laughs> that's a great movie. I don't like The Exorcist. It's I terrific. Think, I, think it's, I think it's very funny. Get out but, of here. Uh, but I, I, that's, that, I mean, that would be, it's, a, it's, a, it's either a great effect. It's a combination of effects and stunts I and thought it was work. an effect because I'd only obviously seen it when in the re-release. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just like a very flexible person being able to do that. Yeah. Mm. And the speed that um, it's probably yep. ramped up a little bit, but the speed uh-huh. that it happens, it's, it's quite unnerving. Mm. Yeah. It's a good movie. Don't you think? No, I, I don't think it is, but we both think it's a good mm, movie. All right. Okay. You know, you about kingdom of heaven, don't you? A movie I still have not seen. It stars Orlando Bloom was directed by Ridley Scott. It's about knights and stuff. Oh yes. Uh-huh. Like you're all knights. They, <laughs> Who's he? Who are they? Who are you a, talking about? There's a knight and he's knighting other knights. Can't knights knight other knights? I don't think they can. I think no. they can. I don't think they can. I think all. you can knight other knights. Do you know what you get in the modern day if you become knighted? I don't know. Like nothing. A, what? You get nothing. Because there was that dude who recently turned 100 and did like laps of his garden, so the queen made him a knight. Yeah, huh? And he didn't get anything? You don't get anything. You should have gotten at least like five years off the queen of like extra life. Just take them from the queen and. <laughs> 
My goodness. Hand them over, don't you think? I, that would be fair, I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But um, so the Kingdom of Heaven, it was panned at the time at its release. It's like, we've seen enough of this bloody sword nonsense that's been going on. You already made Gladiator and whatever. We're, we're sick of this crap. But the extra 45 minutes that are in the extended home release, apparently it's just a completely different and incredible film. Why the change? I guess to get it into cinemas and get people and then get them out. They can't. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. That's that is. See, that's one of the most fascinating ones to me. Like the idea of it's just. It wasn't a. It wasn't one forty-five minute chunk. I know. I'd imagine not. Again, I haven't minutes. seen it. Was it was some subplots or something. Subplots, or some et character development. That so is forth. fascinating. Yeah. Like just the idea, and and see that very much feels like a a studio decision of like, who cares? It's. People do like swords and and knighting and etc. Don't they? And sword fights. Just just put it out there. It doesn't matter what it's like. Yeah. It doesn't matter if people enjoy it because they'll only see it once. Yes. Just put it out there and who cares? Yeah. Because we'll we'll get more sessions in. That is that feels James. It feels very cynical. Does it? Yes. Are you going to watch that now that I've said this? Nope. I got to watch this movie. <laughs> it's amazing to me that I haven't. Mm. It's amazing to you that I haven't too, right? I mean, I'm not amazed by most of the movies you haven't seen. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. I'll try and think of that some. That sounds like an insult, but it wasn't really. It was just. No, well, you know, you can't see everything. You That's know what true, I mean? yeah, yeah. You cannot see everything. Mm. I, it'd be remiss of us if we didn't talk about the Daredevil extended cut. That's it's true. the way Daredevil was meant to be seen. I've seen it. It doesn't add much. It's like the Coolio courtroom scene. Yes. Probably some other stuff, but it doesn't make it a better movie. It just makes it a longer movie. Well, some I, would say that's a better movie. And to be fair, though. We get to live longer in the world of Daredevil. Yeah, I, that's 1990s a, Daredevil. 2000s Daredevil. 2003s Daredevil. I don't know. I like Daredevil, the movie. I mean. I, Why? Because it's fun. It's like. I guess. I just think it's like. I mean, I don't, I'm not going out of my way to watch it, but I think uh-huh. it's it's a fun kind of snapshot of that era. I think it captures oh, everything that's true, yeah. they were doing in the worst comic book movies at the time, yeah, or what they thought true. that people wanted to see in comic book movies. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a time capsule. It's a time. Ca- it's like yeah. let's do X Men and the Matrix with the leather it's suits and whatever, yeah, and, right, and all right. those kinds of things. And like the bullseye is ridiculous. He's carved a bullseye yeah. in his own head. And people have recommended to me uh, a show recently called, or oh, perhaps it's, it's called Mid Nineties. Okay, and uh, you know, and it's 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 a is modern- that the Jonah Hill movie you're talking about. No, I don't think okay. so. Okay, because there's a Joan Hill movie called Mid-90s. And maybe believe. that's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. But a lot of people have been recommending it to me, and I'm like, well, that's, you know, it's nice to see a, a modern-day interpretation of that era, but it is, it is even, it doesn't have the authentic, no matter how hard they try, it does not have the authenticity of just a Daredevil movie. That's right. You know? Something From the that, mid-90s. Yeah, exactly. If you want to watch a movie that really sums up the 90s, watch the movie Can't Hardly Wait. you bloody. That'll do it, <laughs> that's yeah. That's the 90s, mate. <laughs> yeah. We're always constantly being trapped in, uh, in house parties. We are, aren't we? Is that the we? movie Can't Hardly Wait? Yeah, and he's in love with Jennifer Love Hewitt or whatever. Uh, Ethan Embry. Yeah, that's right. Seth Green. Oh, my God, that's the mid-90s. In a, in a, <laughs> if, if, if all the magic and energy of the mid-90s just sort of coalesced into one being, it would be Ethan Embry. Exactly. If you poured it into a big tube, that's what you'd get. That's right. Weird side style. Yeah. Um, I guess Terminator 2 has various editions and special editions and extended stuff and director's cuts. Mm. Uh, I know we talked about this recently, but you mentioned how you there's some of that stuff you like and some of it you don't. Mm-hmm. I think the only stuff that really needs to be there, not even needs to be there, that is a good addition that doesn't kind of bog down the movie is the chips scene where they switch, flick the chip from read only to um, he can learn stuff. Mm, to only read. To only read. It's all he does. But I think that's also... They've cut that movie, like the theatrical version. James, I want to pause. I should have said read never because they needed the the intense jock energy to defeat yeah, the T-1000. That's true. Yeah, you can't be reading books. No, that's it true. doesn't have time for that. But the I think that movie, you also you get the idea that he's learning. Or the regardless. whole time, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So by the end you're not like, but didn't you have a – aren't they read only? There's, I mean, there's, there's literally a scene – There's the, the scene – the way it's cut is that in the in the theatrical release, he says, "I, I'm a. I'll be back." Yes, he says that, but he also says, "I'll that, still a vista, baby." No, he says that, but also he says uh, that the chip in his brain is a learning computer, and then it just cuts off. Yeah, right. But it's only in the extended version where he says, "But it's set to read only." Guess yeah. we're going to have to have a journey into the mind, and you're really going to have to think about some choices you're going to make, Sarah Connor, <laughs> whether you're going to kill me or not. You know? Yeah. I've already predicted you're probably going to have to think about killing me or not. Yep. 
And uh, you we know, need your twin sister to shoot this scene. That's right. That's how they did it. I know. Incredible. Yeah. Look into. I know you know. But so many twins. If, we, in that if movie. I don't mention it, people will mention it to I us. Know. There are a lot of twins in that movie. Yeah. Gone to the days where they'll just get twins. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Twins are out of work. What are they doing now? Just throw them into a big pile. Yep. That's what I think they're doing. Yep. A big sh- snow they're shovel. Probably, no, they're probably in iPhone ads. Yeah, they probably are. Mm, okay, fair enough. But there is some extra scenes that have been added to Terminator 2 over the years. Uh, you know the bit where the Terminator lies about the dog? He's like, mm-hmm. what's up with the Wolfie. Wolfie or whatever? And it's not the dog's real name. Mm-hmm. You actually see the T-1000 then go and he finds the dog and he, he rips the collar off and he mm-hmm. sees that the dog's name is Max. not Wolfie. Not Wolfie. And he's like, <gasps> but like, again, you don't need to know that he's figured it out. Yes. Because also the T-1000 was just in a, a big, they had a big fight together and there's a big crash. So the T-1000 knows that the Terminator is probably with John Cotter at that That's point. That's true, yes. I'd imagine. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a Kyle Reese scene as well. Oh, yes. Where he's like, Sarah, save our son, Sarah. And she's like, I'm fucking, I'm trying, Working man. on it, all right? Little chin-ups. Yeah. What are you doing? You're a ghost. Yeah. You're not doing <laughs> I mean, nothing. you could save our son, <laughs> Kyle Reese. Oh, you can't. Well, he's not a, I know he's not a ghost also. He's like a figment of imagination or whatever. Uh, and then there's a bit also at the end that you don't like where the T-1000 is glitching. Mm. I like it, but you don't like it because it doesn't look as good. Is that right? It's a weird styrofoam feet. I yep, hate it. I can't argue with that. That's right. But I'm going to. Here we go. <laughs> Just warming up my hands. I'm not really getting ready to argue. My goodness. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What else we got here? Because I'm nearing the end of my list. Oh, um, look, we've mentioned it before, but Leon the Professional. It's got some additional creepy scenes in yeah, it. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm going to skip it. I yeah, think. no need. <laughs> when did we talk about Leon? A couple of weeks back, I think. No, it was ages ago. It was a million years ago. I mean, who knows? How long is anything this year? <laughs> I don't know. It was this year, though. Maybe it was last year. I think it was this year. Somebody Are we talking about Luc Besson movies or French films or films with Jean Reno in them? Don't know. It was extreme cool films. So it was this year. Yeah, it must have been. That was cool. Yeah, that was, was cool. that episode this year? I don't know. Well, I no don't know either. Knowing, yeah. What else though? What about James? Kingdom of Heaven. We talked Hear me about out it. here. No. Not Caligula. That. Nope. I know a guy who's probably got it on VHS. His name's John. If you order well. Yeah, you're gonna. You can maybe you can post it down to us. <laughs> I'm on a list of, of movies that's twelve movies drastically improved by a director's cut, and they've put Apocalypse Now on there. And honestly, yeah, right. there's a scene set in a plantation. It's kind of slow. Yeah, I've heard that's there's not maybe one more better. scene that I can't recall. I've heard it's not that much better. But it's more. It's a good movie, I think. Uh, is that, it? that was the one where Brando, didn't he just mostly improvise his dialogue because he was just like, like he turned up and they're like, this guy's put on a lot of weight and doesn't seem to care about anything anymore. Uh-huh. Uh, so, well, let's say his character also does that. Yeah, I think it's because he did those Superman movies and they gave him like $10 million. Yeah, so maybe. He doesn't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess this isn't a great one for me to end on. I've got some other ones we can just list off, but um, I Am Legend has a, there's a director's cut for a director's cut ending, which we've talked about quite a lot. You're familiar with this one though, right? Oh, yeah. But I thought, I thought I'd briefly explain that and then talk about why it was changed. So if you're familiar with the movie I Am Legend, uh, <laughs> at the end of the movie I Am Legend, Will Smith, uh, he's a bit of a legend and he, um, he finds a cure maybe, I think, in one of the versions or both. And then he blows up himself and all the bad guys. I was going to say aliens. They're not aliens. They're technically vampires, dark stalkers, dark seekers with a grenade. Yes. And uh, he's a bit of a legend. Everyone's like. If you keep this sentence going, eventually none of the words will be pronounced correctly or make any sense. <laughs> so, but, and then, and then the, the friends that we meet get away and they're like, he was, he was pretty good, that guy, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other version is that he figures out that the woman that he's kidnapped, the dark seeker, dark stalker, mm-hmm. she is actually the, the, the girlfriend slash love interest of the main zombie guy with mm-hmm. his big billowy torn shirt that he's running yeah, around right. with. And that's the reason why they're going after him, which also makes more sense. And he also has a realisation because he's looking at all the screens of all those different uh, dark seekers, dark stalkers that he's killed. Mm-hmm. And he's like... I'm a bad dude because these are like these are things have feelings. I've they been all have name them. tags. I've got name tags. I mean, killing them, and which they just is worked down at the Kmart. Yeah, I mean that's more in line with the book, obviously, where mm. he figures out that he's a bad dude. And and then the the movie just repeats itself from the perspective of the boyfriend and girlfriend team. <laughs> yeah, they're just having a lovely rom com situation. They just don't have a good time, and he's he's bloody snatched her bloody out of a bloody cupboard or whatever happened in that movie. Yeah. So anyway, the reason they changed it, director Francis Lawrence, which people might know from did some Hunger Games movies, maybe all of them, who's to say? The reason the ending was changed to the happier one, which is also the one where he explodes, <laughs> was because it, it, there was intense negative reactions to the ending where Neville, which is his name, the only reason because that's his name in the original book. and he's, Will Smith would never be a Neville. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He'd be a Nev, would he? No. No. He'd be a Jack or a John. Yeah. 
Because that's the only acceptable hero <laughs> names in, that's true. in mainstream cinema. Uh, uh, Neville had he had a villainous realization, and the test audiences didn't like that. Like a moment of self self doubt from a character. Don't want that in my movie. So that's why you. they got rid of it. So mm-hmm. that's good, I guess. And it makes that movie much worse. I feel like I like that movie, but I do not like the original ending. So I don't like that movie or that ending or the like, alternate ending. What about the Batman? Superman? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh my god! <laughs> do you remember when they showed it? Yes. And people were like, "But when?" Twenty sixteen. Yeah, that's when. That's right. Yeah, go to someone. Someone was going to rattle. I off. hired a guy mm. to go into every screening. So when people were like, "But when?" he'd go twenty sixteen, <laughs> and we'd all know. And then it have to add the caveat that that Superman S is actually from the Superman Returns films, but we're actually not going to continue with that particular franchise. It's, we're aiming for a reboot at, at that point. But nobody would hear that because it was just cheering at that point. <laughs> yeah, so right. towards the end of his shift, like he'd been doing it for a few weeks in the yeah. theatrical run, he just stopped saying that. <laughs> Still got paid the same. <laughs> no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America, standard cut of that. Watchmen, there's various versions. One where they put the pirate stuff back in as well. Sucker Punch, never seen either version. All should we watch Sucker Punch? No. Because we're talking about all the Snyder movies. I Maybe we should know, watch Sucker Mason. Punch. I know, Mason. I hear it's bad. Yeah, apparently visually very interesting. That's where, yep. I but emotionally that. quite taxing. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen yeah. it. Maybe we'd love it. Also, I've heard people like. Oh, what if we did though? What a revelation for us but, as people. But I've heard people say like if you watch it like a video game cutscene or like a like a soundtrack to a movie film. Or if you put an ice pick through your brain. Yeah, then, that's, then you might actually like it. Mm. Almost Famous, Touch of Evil, Apocalypse Now Redux, which we talked about, and of course the movie Brazil, which is our favorite movie. No, I hate it. I don't like the movie Brazil either. Maybe we watched the wrong version though. Mm, did you we? Think? Though? I don't know. I saw the bit with the stretched face and the <laughs> he had a night suit and he had <laughs> and he had a big wings at some point. And... Should we re- rewatch Brazil? Isn't no. I've got I've surely got, something's going to happen. So that, limited. Sh- surely something that will ha- will happen in society mm. or a movie will be released and we'll have to be like maybe there'll be a Python anniversary or something like that. A no, one of them died. Two of them are dead now. Oh, well, we've missed those. So. I know. But the thing about the movie Brazil, I'm sure one version is like the 1984 kind of esque version, which I know it's like a loose kind of. They parallel each other. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah. those properties, but where like the government get him and they like they've got him in the the brain torture, and then another version where he actually escapes and goes on to be a media mogul in the movie Tomorrow Never Dies. Huh. What a twist! I know. So that's all the movies that have ever had an extended or director's cut. Can you name another one, Mason? No. Then we've named them all. Wow. But look, if people want to uh, send some through, yeah, we're bloody. What are, what are some good ones maybe, I guess, is my question. <laughs> What's your question? What is your? Let us know one that you enjoy or hate, but mm. give us the, the key moment where you're like, oh, this turned it around for me is something I love or this was a horrible mistake they've made. Absolutely. We are all our own auteurs out there. We can, oh. we can make that decision, I think. I think it's also interesting that we're in the age where people can make their own edits of things. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously the Phantom edit is like a huge, you know, like a, that was a huge kind of fan reaction to, to Star Wars and all of those kinds of things. And now people would kind of do that to everything, for everything and it's kind of maybe it's lost its, you know, it's not as interesting anymore because literally anybody can do it now. I don't know if it's lost its its lust. Do you want to watch a fan edit of something? Because I would. I don't generally. That's a that's a good question. Uh, I not a Star Wars. I don't think the only version I would like to see is you know it's, there's the despecialized editions of Star Wars which somebody has made. Yeah, right. Taken the original films and just made them as they they're supposed to be saying. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm. Did they just get their VHS copies of the old ones? There is a whole lot of like different scans and redoing of effects or undoing of effects and things like that. Yeah, you can download them if you want. I will. You don't have to. It's illegal. Don't admit to that. (laughs) Gosh, I I shan't. Mm. I'll just download the Bible. (laughs) Very good. Which is royalty free. It's illegal, Mason. It's not, though. Okay, you're lucky. Yeah. And if it is, only God can judge me. (laughs) Very good. And now it's time for What Are We Reading? Oh, what are we going to read? I'm doing the theme. Westworld today. You think I wasn't going to do it, Mason? Did you think I wasn't going to do that? No, I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> I knew you would. Well, I'm nothing if not boring and predictable. That's the spirit. What are you, Westworld, today? Uh, well, on your advice, I've started watching Devs. And? I like it a lot. It's, it's good, isn't uh, it? It's very, very intense. What it's episode a, are you up to? I'm up to about three or four, I think. Mm, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we should discuss it when I finally finish it. We'll discuss it at length. In real life? Yes. Okay, good. Nice. Pretty good, right? You've been watching Space Force, right? I have been watching Space Force, but I've, I've heard f- 
many mixed things about Space well, Force. That's not inaccurate, but I'm probably going to talk about that on Suggestible this week. And I haven't finished it, so I, but I have a lot of thoughts about yes. it. But I'm, I kind of want to kind of finish it and then think about it for a little bit. But it's something I also watched was Patton Oswalt has a new comedy special. It's been a couple of oh, weeks. I love everything. I love everything. Uh, so the previous show was about, um, and he does, of course, touch upon this where it's his first a comedy hour. Mm-hmm. What's it called? Set? What are they called? Special? Special, since, yes. Since his wife but it died. Mm-hmm. And this is, I guess, a sequel to that because that's how the passage of time works. And it's a much more kind of, it's it's a good comedy special in the sense that it's just good to see him doing well. Yeah, exactly, know? right? And it's just a nice kind of fun thing to watch. And look, I guess technically it's probably not as good as the previous one. But oh, it's, okay, right. But it's also... Way to kick a man while he's No, no, down. but that's the thing that... Because that are very deep and poignant moments that you cannot replicate for obvious reasons. Yeah, right. But it's just honest. It's still, it's just sound like, I'm not kicking it. It's great. <laughs> and it's really funny. I will and, also watch yeah, it. Yeah, that so, sounds really good. Did you yeah. know his brother is a, he does many things. He's yeah. a comedy writer and stuff, but he has a, he's a. He's, and sometimes his manager maybe, or they do, so. or they write stuff but, together. Yeah, and, so Matt Oswald, he has a, he's an Instagram and uh, that's it. That's it. That's the end of the story. Well, that's great. No, he's funny on Twitter and et cetera, <laughs> but he, he has uh he, one of his things is he uh, he takes photographs of old like liquor stores. Look at this and, photograph of this liquor store. Exactly, and and he's got a book called Liquor Stores and Detours, which is like a collection of uh, <laughs> good name. of of but it's like old rundown liquor stores at night and in you know sun sunset, and it looks really good. And he's got a Kickstarter to do a second printing of it, and I missed out on the first. Uh, run of it, and I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna get it this time around. It's a little bit spano, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna. How much? I'm gonna treat myself. Uh, if you're in America, it's like sixty bucks US, but in Australia, it's significantly more than that. Shipping. Yeah, like a lot. Mm. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna treat myself. I think. Hey, look, it, you should. Do you have a coffee table? Yes. A perfect opportunity. <laughs> Imagine if you didn't. Right. You on could build one from books. <laughs> you could. I think I'm gonna get it. It's just. It's. It's very. Just very. Just very evocative. What does he write about each one? Or he I doesn't. Think, no, I think he writes. I think he writes a little story, like a little short story about yeah, cool. each one. So I love the nicheosity of that. Right? Don't it's you? Exci- yeah, yeah. That I like. I like old timey diners. Yeah, right. They're great. Mm. Do you like new diners made to look like old timey diners? No, Correct I hate those. No. I hate those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I like? Uh, it's only the jam factory that we yeah. eat at and hate. <laughs> we we went there once. And yeah, and that's true. We did. Yeah. We had a stink about it. That's and we got a photo saying. there. Yeah, we did. But they're on roller blades or skates, so that's cool. Uh, I like. I also like um, Hungry Jacks, which is the Australian <laughs> version of Burger King, but sometimes they've retrofitted it <laughs> yes. so it looks like an old school yeah. diner. Yeah. And why? I think they tore them all down though. I've, I've, I've yeah, they might have. Yeah, yeah. you it's might be shame. right. Terrific. Yeah. Mm. What an aesthetic. Yeah. What's uh, the theme song? I guess. Oh, we'll do letters. Unless we'll you got more. Classic one was letters. Oh, letters. We love you. Right now, we're going to do that. Uh, if you do want to the show, you can weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. James, James, no. <laughs> you've gone too far. Uh, Mason, you've got a, I know you've got a lot of Gmails oh, in a, there today. Yeah, a bunch of letters. Let uh, grab but one again, I didn't get that many hashtag Weekly Planet Pods. Please send them on through. But yeah, I've still got some do. absolute crackers here that we can do. Do you want me to start kick things off or do you now, want me to? This is from Samuel Jorgsen. Mm, good name. Uh, it says, hi, Mason, and the one who has two kids now. I just wanted to say that your podcast has been very helpful and uplifting during this goddamned quarantine. Yeah. Uh, I was due to start at a new job the day after lockdown came into effect in the UK, but with lockdown, they couldn't take me on, and I'd already left my previous post. Oh, my which God. Sucked, right? Being able to count my days doing absolutely nothing by saying Monday is Weekly Planet Day and Thursday is Caravan of Garbage is Suggestible has really helped these weeks. Caravan Bye-bye. of Garbage is on Tuesday. Well, to be fair, the podcast section is <laughs> don't on. Don't kick a man while No, no, I'm just saying. About Doug. Yes. No, the video was on Tuesday. Oh, I say right, right, The audio right. was on Thursday. Well, well. Well, he didn't know my name, so fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again, Sam. And then it says, P.S., James, I hope you can outrun this new kid. So guess what? He did know your name the whole time. And you've besmirched his, his good name, which is Samuel. If I don't know if you're aware. Anyway, but I have now. we both teamed up to get you. So that was good. I didn't plan it, but it worked out really well. Uh, yeah, what do you got? What do you got I mean, I guess I'm just going to double down on the hate on that one. That's yeah, what that's you do. I'm not going to yeah, admit yeah, fold, yeah. am I? Yep. No, thank you for the lovely email. Mm. Uh, this is from Ziara. Uh, on, I've said that wrong probably. It starts with an X. But uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. If you could erase a movie from your memory, which one would it be? Oh. Now, I took this as a couple of ways because it could be a bad movie that you don't want to see. Yeah, right. Or something that you'd want to see again. Yeah. Uh, what, where, where, where are you at anyway? It's a good question. I was just thinking today about like 
com- like comfort watches. Like you just, you know, like mm, oh, sure. I, like, I like to watch, you know, it just a, gives you a nice warm, fuzzy feeling. And I'm like, you know, I was, I was thinking Ocean's Eleven. The, oh, that's a good movie, the, isn't the it? Brad, the Brad Pitt, uh, uh, Clooney one. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, that's, it's just a nice time. They're stealing some money. Isn't it nice? Yeah, it is nice. Maybe I'd erase my memory of that one and be like, hmm. Maybe you could erase your memory of the original one so we could do another video on it. No, I never. No. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Yeah. I like that idea of a comfort watch, but with the comfort watch, isn't the idea also that you go back and you're like, I know this. and That's true. You're it. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, what's a movie that... Do you think you'd be like... Because I, I think about it, I'm like, oh, because I know people are like, oh, I'd love to watch Lord of the Rings again. Yeah, yeah. I know Peter Jackson says, I'd love to watch Lord of the Rings having not made them because yep. he can he can never get that. So uh-huh. I think George Lucas has mentioned the same thing with Star Wars. You can never be a fan because you see everything yep. that's gone into it. But... I don't know if there's certain movies like you like you know like I want to see the Sixth Sense because of the twist or I want to watch Empire Strikes Back for the first time, but you maybe watch it and go, well, this is quaint, isn't it? Right. Because yeah, of everything yeah. that has come since. So it's I, also it's it's tricky hmm. to do it with a franchise as well. I was yeah. just thinking like, oh, you know, just that one. Yeah, <laughs> like right. Just the one it's movie like, to franchise. It's like, well, I am the first Iron Man. Yeah. You know, I remember being I'm being like, oh, this is something special. I really like you know it was kind of yeah. a thrill. But imagine just erasing that from your memory, and I've still got, I've got the other twenty <laughs> That's just exactly in my right. head, and people are like, yeah, that really kicked off with Iron Man, and I'm like, what? 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 You mean yeah. Iron Man two? <laughs> would it dis- would it dismantle my memory of all the other movies as well? Potentially, yeah. yeah. I guess it would. Uh, and you know what? In the uh, in the in the spirit of it, I'm going to say Memento. That's I'd, a good I'd like, one. I'd like the memory of the movie Memento erased, yeah, and then good. I could watch a movie about memories again. And I think I, that that's, would be... that's also pretty fresh. Yeah. So like so like whatever time you watch it in. So you could yeah, yeah. watch it 20 years later, and it uh-huh. still wouldn't feel like a movie from 20 no, years there's ago. No, there's what about no... the Matrix? But then there's the sequels. That's true. Yeah. I think the Matrix, if you didn't know about the Matrix, would still be good if you watched the Matrix. Oh yeah, that w- that was another one where it's like this is a turning point. Yeah, I think and Inception. I'm... If we're talking Christopher Nolan, would be a good one to watch again. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh something more recent. I really liked Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah, you'd I think that would be a good. That would be a pleasant surprise. Being like, "There's a new Blade Runner, and it's amazing." <laughs> I think that would be I'm nice. Tell everybody about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everybody knows about it, and they decided not to see it. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Mm. But I guess bad movies. I, yeah. There's nothing I really do want to erase, to be honest. You? No, because I I feel like we, and especially when we do a caravan of garbage or something, or just ruin something in real life. <laughs> yeah. Just I, you know, you can derive a lot of fun out of. Just making fun of something that's bad. I, I I think it's to our benefit having seen that stuff. Yeah. It wouldn't be probably if we didn't do this. Uh-huh. I think there'd be stuff that I'm like, oh, man, I don't need. I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. Can't even think of one. But Electra. I don't need, need the movie Electra. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I think one day I'm going to need the movie Electra. <laughs> you know? And I guess the problem also is that if I erase, say, a Transformers movie. Yeah. Eventually, I'm going to get curious about it. <laughs> yeah. Like if I if I could somehow erase, erase all the Transformers movies from my mind, yeah, you'd end up watching them all, wouldn't well, you? Well, yeah, somebody would be like, "What about those Transformers movies?" And I'd go, "Man, I loved Transformers <laughs> when I was a kid, and they made movies. I'm going to watch the movies. Oh no, I've got a headache now. It's not going away." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually wouldn't mind people. Uh, Tweeting in or about yeah, that. Yeah, let us know. Let what us a know. movie you would erase w- for good or ill. And why. Yeah, right. Don't just name things. We need context. Mm. I'm not savages. This is an email from Robert Kelly. Hello, Robert it Kelly. says, hi, I'm high. But there's a lot. I should. No, you're Robert Kelly. <laughs> oh, my God. He's done it. Wow. <laughs> uh, I should point out there are a lot of spelling mistakes in this. <laughs> is uh, there? But it says, I'm high. And then there's some <laughs> winky emojis. It says, but, <laughs> so, so he's telling us on the download. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm high, weak. Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> but you should put your full name in. But it doesn't matter because the world's gone blow up or feels like it. <laughs> but you two funny, cool dudes make everything fell a little less blowy uppy. <laughs> Makes my week start off right, and the VOs you make are just a nice escape. Also applies to Ben from Canada's vids. Those are cool. Oh, he's too. Me. Yeah. So thank you from me, Robert Kelly, smile face, smiley face emoji. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> now, off the back of this, I don't know about any fake drunk or people getting drunk and high sending us emails. This is a one-off. Yes. This is a special email. Because it's <laughs> special times. <laughs> Do not dis- besmirch this. Also, Robert, uh, apologies in advance if uh, you being high doesn't affect your typing at all and maybe you just have dyslexia or something <laughs> yes, like that. Right, I exactly. apologize. Also, we apologize in advance if, you are watch- if you're listening to this high and you're like, is this real? Yep. It's not. It's uh, not we, real. We also apologize in advance if somehow you've – uh, 
you're high at work and you set this up to play on, on speakers at work and now everybody knows you're high and you've been fired. That's right. So, But don't yeah. use your full name. Don't do that, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like Robert Kelly is pretty, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably a few of them I'd imagine probably, on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a tweet here from C. Ray, Weekly Planet, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Mm-hmm. Greatest podcast of all time. I don't know about that, but probably. We'll take it. Yeah. James and Mason's. It's, t- it's the best one made in these four walls, maybe. <laughs> Three. Three and a floor. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yep. Uh, James and Mason's top 10 or however many you get to alien movies of all time. Alien is one. Wait, are we just including any movies with any kind of alien? Yeah. Okay. Well, people, you know what I mean? Because some people are pretty strange, Oh, well, that's true. Yes. But no, you can't say that. Uh, uh, so alien or aliens, we can pick one. What do you put in? Aliens. I'm going to say alien. Okay, well then. But covered. I'd probably pick aliens, <laughs> to <laughs> okay. be honest, but they're both uh-huh. great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Independence Day, Resurgence. Yep, bad movie. Very bad. <laughs> no, it's so not. bad. Men in Black 1. Yep, Arrival. Men in Black 3. No. No. The new one, International. <laughs> no. Yeah. Very much no. Uh, what about an E.T.? No, I don't like E.T. Really? I like E.T. No, I would. didn't really like it, and then I really liked it. Yeah, uh, what about The Thing? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about your Close Encounters guy? Nope. I haven't seen it in a while. What about Space Odyssey? What about Space Balls? Nah. <laughs> Does <laughs> that right. count? Like Star Wars and science fiction, no, like no, that. I think so. No, just so yeah. none of the Star Treks. No, but they're set on they're set in our universe, though. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, still no. Okay, none of the Star Treks. I don't think so. Okay, I might say I like the reboot. I know there's it's not considered the best uh-huh. one. People would say Wrath of Khan. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. From the eighties and <laughs> what are you like a million years old if you like that movie? Yes, it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. So, what about uh, Cloverfield? That's a good one. That's a good solid a, one. Here's a great one. What about Under the Skin, which is that Scarlett Johansson one? I haven't seen one. that yet. Scarlett Johansson one. And she's, she's, she's an alien, but she's in a, a Scarlett Johansson body. Yes. Mm-hmm. What about um, Arrival? And you said Arrival, but we'll put it in a twice. Forget that one. Forget that okay. one. Forget <laughs> okay. it. Forget it already. All right. What about District 9? That's a good one. Yeah, it isn't it? Mm. What about Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Nope. Contact? Nope. Avatar? No. Interstellar? They nope. could be f- humans, humans from the future as well. Uh huh. Mars Attacks? Uh, I'm going to say no. Predator. Oh. The Thing 2011. Nope, it's not bad. Signs? No. I've never seen Attack the Block. I've also never Gotta seen Attack the, Attack, Attack the Block. Got to watch Attack the Block. John Boyega's own. Yep. Okay, Attack I'm gonna, the Block. I'm going to end on this one. Yes. Uh, actually, I've got a, uh, Starship Troopers. There's good alien movies, isn't there? <laughs> there are good alien movies. It's true. Galaxy Quest is incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's enough, though, I think. I think so. We've got Blade Runner here. There's no aliens in Blade Runner. Is there? Well, in a way, aren't humans the real aliens in that scenario because of their loss of humanity, something, something, replicant, something? Mm, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess they've got like Avengers and stuff. Like you could pick one of those, couldn't you? Because they're all got aliens in them technically because they're all set in weird interdimensional and interstellar stuff going yes, on there. Correct. Anyway, that's all the alien movies. That's true. <laughs> we covered you, them all. And if you can't believe. I bet I'll think of one tonight. I'll be like, God damn it. I was going to say, but if people can't believe that we missed one, we didn't. We didn't actually. We, we didn't, didn't miss it. We said all the alien <laughs> movies. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. this one is for, this is an email from, uh, from uh, Matthew Gaultier. It says, what's up, oh friendos? Hope I, well, the, the subject line says, buy anything stupid during quarantine. Mm, good question. It says, what's up, friendos? Hope all is good. As a child, I remember having these little one-inch tall anthropomorphic animal people called Battle Beasts circa 1988, and I just found them on eBay, and I might have just spent $300 on toys. <laughs> I think I remember Battle Beasts. I'm just Googling. Did they have little holographic things on them? Uh, yeah, I know these. I feel like I've just seen these in, like, the bottom of somebody's toy chest. Yeah. That little holographic thing on it, I think, and you okay. like, and you you could you rubbed it, and the heat. Oh my and god! That I, little thing I come remember up on these. It? I think so. Yeah. Anyway, uh, did you guys make any stupid purchases while stuck in quarantine? If not, what would you want to get? Oh man! So much love, Fox from Texas. Um, I very nearly bought a Lego 1989 Batmobile. You should get that. Like 400 bucks. No, you shouldn't get that then. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Changed my mind. 100 on bucks? That. Absolutely. I yeah. would have bought it without a second thought, but I'm like, oof. I bought oof. some uh, properly um, medically designed masks if I ever need one. That'll, oh, what an extravagant <laughs> purchase. <laughs> but I also bought some for my family. Ugh, what an extravagant purchase. Okay. If I had to buy something, it would be that Star Wars arcade trilogy arcade cabinet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I can never justify owning. One that's like $7,000? Yes, more yeah, than right. that, plus uh-huh. shipping. Yeah, yeah. I, but I'm hoping, because you know 1UP Arcade, I think they're called? Yep. They repurpose, they make, they'll get like the Ninja Turtles cabinet and they'll make like a slightly miniaturized one. Oh, I see. And they, I don't think they ship here though, but 
I've just been waiting. They've done some Star yeah. Wars ones. They've done uh-huh. like the 80s ones, but I'm just waiting them for, to make it. So I'm like, bam, yeah, that's the one I want. I bought a giant box of Pop-Tarts, like a, like a crate's worth of Pop-Tarts. But like, Because you can't really get them in Australia. You can no, get like one variety. You go to a store, like a specialty store. You go to a specialty store, but I got a whole bunch delivered. I don't think I've ever had a Pop-Tart. They're not great, but they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the novelty of them. How long does a... They can't be good for you in any sense, no, can absolutely they? absolutely not. But I'm in quarantine. Who How, cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter. How long do they last? I mean, technically, I'm not in quarantine at all. I'm still going to work and that's stuff. That's true. But you're keeping your distance. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're driving the tram from the top of the tram like that's Mr. Bean <laughs> with a big rope. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. No, so I don't know. I've, I haven't done any extra... I, I buy a lot of various uh, kombuchas and things, don't I? You sure do. But that, yeah. is that extravagant? Because I'm just yeah, I'm I know how much they <laughs> cost individually, so it is very extravagant. <laughs> they are expensive, aren't they? You know, you can just get that can, yeah. finish it. And then just go outside to a puddle and just scoop up some puddle <laughs> water and it'll taste the same. Got you. I've, and I've, got whatever company that is. That's a good one. They're called um, Liberty. Huh. They're good. Huh. Liberty Turd Water Kombucha. That's interesting. <laughs> I would 100% sponsor these guys in a minute. Too late. I called them Turd Water. Ah, I do what I'd suggest about it. <laughs> <Yeah, you. right. laughs> so, <laughs> so it's the best one. I've tried a bunch of kombuchas. This is the best one. Nice. Um, I got any more? Because I am I got, I got. I got. I got two more. I got, got two it. more. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got one. One's a question, and mm. one's just a nice thing. I thought I would put, put some nice things in there. This is from Nathan Mendoza. Yeah. Uh, he says, "Love the show. Been a fan for years. Hope all is well. Everything is pretty well." Uh, I wanted to ask how you felt about comics, graphic novels that are considered one-offs, how they are uh, uh, translated to the screen. So, more specifically, since I'm reading them, Kick-Ass One and Two, Wanted, V for Vendetta, and Scott Pilgrim. Do you feel they were translated well despite the changes? Or do you think making them into shows would have done them more justice, like The Boys? Yeah, okay. Are there any great ones, and which ones do you feel should be translated on the screen next? Well, we're getting, we're getting uh, The Old Guard, so that's yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's coming soon. I think V for Vendetta is terrific. I yeah. actually recently talked about this with Sal from Comic Pop. There's a video uh-huh. on that channel where, on this channel where we go through a bunch. But hmm, good question. I think Wanted is crushingly average. Yeah, it is. And for people who have seen maybe seen the movie but not the comic book, Wanted – uh, James McAvoy discovers that he's his father was a was a, a an assassin. He's good with good with the pistolas, and it turns out he's got that same skill. Yep. But in the comic book, it's the same. He's also he's still a, a shooty assassin. But uh, rather than all his teammates also being assassins, they're all like comic book supervillains. Like there's, yes. a, there's a Joker and a style character and a Lex Luthor style character and etc. Yep. And I think that's it's it's so much better. And the, the I, I, people, I mean, the movie, I there's a loom of prophecy that tells you who to That's shoot. That's right, yeah. And I don't necessarily like I don't I don't think the execution necessarily is perfect in Wanted the comic book, but I think just as an idea, it's a universe in which yeah. the heroes the all the heroes were killed and the villains took over the world. Yeah, they banned it sort together. of sort of ruined it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I the translation there felt to me like again like the early days of superhero movies where they went we can't do we this. We can't we can't do this to be too weird. Well, yeah. let's just have men in leather suits. Yes. And then, you know, see how people like that and it's like no just do the mm. just go the whole hog oh, although i'm sure that version would be would have been massively more expensive apparently the game which is a, an adaptation of the movie it hits closer for one year he gets the uniform like his outfit and the like it's not amazing but it does things like the curved bullet mechanic is re- it's like a cover based oh, shooter okay. but you can do it's like a golf game yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> you draw the arc and you click. Pretty and you much wait for the meter to go back yeah. and forth, and you're like, "Oh, too far." Yeah, it's not fun. How does that? How does that represent golf? A meter going too far? <laughs> it shouldn't. <laughs> you ever played golf? You no, know, I've bad. I've, I've gone to the, yeah, I've gone to the like the the driving range, but I've never played golf. You ever hit the links? I've never hit. No, I've never hit the links, James. <laughs> Never done that. I don't know if I, I think I told you this, but I had a golf day earlier this year mm-hmm. uh, that my friends all organized. Like a golf dad day. Like a golf. It, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. And so, and then they were like, you got to be down at this particular golf course at 7.30 in the morning. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not doing that. Because, you know, I want to. S- but then you did because you were a good friend, right? No, Mason, I didn't. What I did do instead is went and bought a whole lot of golf clothes and golf gear and turned up later to the barbecue in that gear and went, who's ready to golf? Nice. And people are like, ha ha, James, you do jokes. And I'm like, I wasted like 120 bucks on this gear <laughs> for, for nothing. That's like two kombuchas. I know. What's next? Okay, one more. One more letter. Uh, this is from Benjamin King. It says, a big lovely shout out. Oh, I love hey, James shout and Mason, outs. I recently got my shielding letter from the NHS telling me I should stay home and not leave my house due to all this COVID stuff. Yeah, don't do it. And I've got to say, it has somehow freaked me the heck out. Yeah, I know a few people have. Yeah. Uh, the, the NHS in the UK have basically 
like sent out letters being like, you know, you you are we know from your records you're a bit immunocompromised yes. or what have you, so you cannot leave the house for s- several months. Yes, which is you know a bit of a bit of a something. But he says there are some things that are helping me through these times and helping me stay calm. And I was hoping you could shout it out for me on the pod. Firstly, to all the great mates that's uh, been in the main Facebook group or the various spinoffs I'm in. So then we've got WrestleMania, we've got great poker mates, oh uh, we've God, got I mean, IG Greaty mates, which is yes. Star Wars, and uh, Gallerate mates which I'm assuming is Doctor Who. I I think there might be a new one. Uh, This community is amazing. They are kind, supportive, funny, and respectful. There's healthy mates as well. Yeah, there is, yeah. yeah. I've never had such brilliant interactions online. We're glad. That's really good. good. Um, And it's also good that we don't run those and they're so well, they're nice. Yeah, but I mean, they're certainly well moderated by by the folks, uh, Sarabi and Marty and and Collings and Fidel and Maisie. And, of course, Blevins, who who started them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still in there but not not moderating. Uh, Uh, Secondly, to the Weekly Planet peeps, you find gentlemen shooting news up my butthole. Claire with their recommendations are the folks that do go on with their fascinating tales each week. This is premium content and a brilliant distraction from the harshness of the world. And lastly, to my wife and fellow great mate Maria, who is 100% the best wifey anyone could ever hope for. Hang on. No, he said it. It's too late. It's official now. Uh, Sorry for such a long message, but wanted to throw out there how much you all mean to me and how much I appreciate being part of such a brilliant family. Grab that gem, guys, from Ben King. Thank you, Ben King. Truly you are Ben King. That's your, right. Your name. Truly your name is officially <laughs> Ben King based on this email you have sent us. <laughs> That's really nice. It is nice. And yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for reading those. They were really nice very to welcome. hear. Um, I don't uh, Yeah, so before we wrap it up, um, be safe, obviously. Be, be careful. Are you referring uh, to me wrapping it up? You can I do what be you safe want. while <laughs> wrapping this up? <laughs> That's right. Be safe and wrap up in general, okay, Mason. Oh, hello. 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 Yeah, I'm just going to play with this nail gun while I wrap this <laughs> the show up. But uh, it's it's very much the virus. It's very much real. What virus? And the big virus that's happening oh, yeah, yeah, at the yeah, yeah, moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, it just is. Mm. And just be as careful as you can, obviously, different circumstances. Depends where you are in the world. Depends on what state of the like your country is currently in. or Depending what kind of state you're in. Exactly. Our friend who's high, Robert yeah, Key. That's right. <laughs> but even if it's even if you don't think it's real... Which I, you know what, you, you probably do. If you're listening to this, you probably think it's real. Robert uh, Kelly, Robert the Kelly, high guy's yes, name is Robert Kelly. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's no harm in staying it anyway, just in case you think it's not yeah, real. That's right. But heads up, it's fucking real, and be careful. Yeah, and don't jeopardize yourself or others, please. That's right. Yeah, I wash your dang hands. Wash your dang hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to bring us home, Mason? Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for sending a nice email. Thank you for. Uh, uh, telling a friend about it in this uh, these uh, strange times. Mm. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving a nice review, James. Do you have a nice review? A couple there? here. This says quality banter, and it's from Ben from America. Mm. Five stars. You could just do this in, in app, Mason. Did you know that? We finally got Ben from America. We've had Ben from Canada I know. for ages. We got the real version. That's right. got him. No, he's great. He's great too. <laughs> Uh, so I've been listening to the pod for years. You can just do it in app, Mason. This Listen review. to the pod. Yeah, no, no, yes. And like you can review in nice. your iTunes or whatever you do. And I've watched almost all the YouTubes. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for providing countless hours of entertainment. Also, just watch Ben from Canada's Moneyball video. So good. Uh, James and Mason, please allow him to make more great videos. Uh, he is. He's got free reign. Um, so it's he's working on roughly every two to three weeks. He's working oh on goodness. something. So, yeah, so I, I'm – a bit busy at the moment with various family things um, and other and things going on, but um, yes, he he, will, he he can make stuff. Nice. And so can you, Mason? You want to make a video? Yeah, yeah. Get go off. You go then. All right, I'm going to film this glass of water. Yep, and then I'm just going to put it up on your channel. That's <laughs> See, it. That's I'll, all do I'm it. do. I'll do it. I'll do it. I know you would. No, I dare it. <laughs> Because, but they wouldn't have the context, James. I know the wonderful listeners would have the context, and they would give that an up, up vote and a like and a what have you. But other people would be like, "You should die." They'd say to me, "Yeah." But here's the thing, though: if we do put it up, which yeah. hey, it might happen. If you get it, just write, "I get it," but don't explain it. Nice, don't explain where nice, you get it. Nice. Don't nice, explain nice. how you know it. Yeah, just yeah. that you get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is another uh, review from Unexpected Max Power zero four one eight. You would think Red Hot Comic Book Movie News shooting up your butthole would be painful, but it's actually quite pleasant. Mm. That's great. Five stars. Uh, excellent. Bring us home, Mason. Uh, look, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening once again. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook, at Gmail, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. Yes. Uh, I am yes. Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and Nick Maso, N-I-C-K-M-A-S-E-A-U on Instagram. You are Mr. Sunday Movies Everywhere, James. That's right. Uh, uh, you can also sign up to the newsletter at planetbroadcasting.com. That's from the great Rob Collins. Correct. 
Uh, and you can go to the aforementioned uh, uh, Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Have some fine old times over there. Absolutely, you can. You can also support the show if you wish. You can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. That would be certainly very much appreciated. You can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description once again. Uh, if you can shop local, please do. But if you're stuck in your house like our friends at the NHS, uh, you can uh, go through our link on uh, Amazon. That's buy some right, stuff exactly. On Amazon. Make rich people even richer. That's correct. Yeah. Us. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got some t-shirts on tpublic.com uh, you can uh, thank you to the brute and the basilisk and rack and for all our musical themes mm. that's a whole show I reckon it is Caravan of Garbage starts this week with the Man of Steel trilogy we're excited for that you get, there's going to be there's a very good trailer that I've put together <laughs> we, you've seen we, it oh we, sorry we put it together well, we, we came up with a fun concept and I think it's been executed flawlessly thank you very I much I mean not as flawlessly as this video of this glass <laughs> that I'm going to take but uh, pretty still pretty good <laughs> that's right uh, so next week, um, as always, I may or may not be back, depending on how things are going. Well, don't threaten us with a good time, James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I hope everything's Thank all right. you. I appreciate I that. Like but um, yeah, so, uh, but there'll, or maybe we just might do another news one this week. The reason why this one was longer is because we had a chance to record something earlier this week to, right. to make this a bit, a bit longer, which was nice. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, and goodbye. Uh, grab that gem. We'll see you next week or maybe a week after that. Yeah, maybe. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.